I watched that movie over and over and over again. I think 26 times in one week. Uh-huh. When I was when it when I don't remember how old I was, but I was really young, and so that that, that movie really impacted me. Oh, me too. Um, me too. I mean, when I, when I saw it, I was like, this is real. And I was probably like in third grade. And it wasn't even the first Star Wars. It was like Return of the Jedi. And I was like, this shit is real. And this whole... That was eye-opening for me. I, I got it. I was like, the Force is real. And <laughs> and it is. <laughs> and it all you know, is. There's a religion around the Force now. Oh, I bet. I bet. I mean, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's chi. You, we would call it chi or prana or yeah, yeah. yeah. all it was. Ether and you know all that. Yeah. Uh, in the or if you read, if you if you get a copy of George Lucas's uh, book Star Wars, in the front of the book, he he talks about the New World Order, and then in a um, they were doing an interview with him somewhere. I forget where it was, but he was explaining that the. The, the movie, uh, the, the story of Star Wars is his way of explaining what is happening or going to happen in our world. No shit, he said that. I mean, because it's clear. It's so clear. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, you know, I always thought that, you know, when I was waking up to the, the NWO stuff, I thought, man, that's exactly what that is. But then later on, I actually saw him state that. Amazing. So that is what it is. Yeah. He's, he's totally on top of it. And, and, and all, all the stories, right? I mean everything. I'm sensitive to like just any little electro electro anything. Oh, I can hear 60 cycle hum from electricity. Isn't that amazing? I have a fan actually that I think puts out 432 just on accident. I know they didn't plan on this, but it is the most peaceful. I you know what? I'll turn on that fan when it's hot and I'm out. I'm out in like uh, you know 20 minutes and I'm like shit. I didn't. I couldn't afford to take a nap right now, but. It's that damn fan. Are you hearing that? At a, are you hearing it? Barely, but I'm. I mean, I'm. I don't. I'm listening through line array speakers. I don't know if you know what those are. No. Uh, have you been to a concert recently? No. Within the last ten years. God, no. I'm ashamed to say no. <laughs> well, I, the line arrays are uh, the speakers they're using today, and I actually built my own. Oh, I have really? Two huge line arrays. Up nice. beside my monitor here, oh, so I awesome. have con- literally concert speakers firing it. Oh, sick! <laughs> yeah, I'm so out of tune. The last good speakers I knew of was like Sir Win Vegas, you know, like 20 years oh, ago yeah. or something like that. <laughs> well, I was in a thrift store one day, and um, I saw these speakers sitting in the uh, or the well, the, the cabinets for the, they had speakers in, them, but I saw the cabinets sitting in the back corner, and I said how much do you want for these and the lady looked at them she goes ah give me ten dollars no way and i kind of was like wait what and i said okay and i walked away and i'm kind of thinking am i did i just hear that and i said wait a minute how much do you want for this she said just ten dollars i was like okay let me think about it and i'm walking around the store and i know that these things are worth at least 500 wow this yeah and so a miracle I, said, oh, I think i'll take them and i took them for ten dollars <laughs> now and then i brought them home and reworked them and put new speakers in them and uh but they're phenomenal i mean they really they really sound good for oh that's awesome yeah because i can hear you know a lot of times people don't realize if you use crappy speakers and you work you it, it turn you don't hear what's really there so you want to use the best quality in order to hear these things oh yeah so i I work really hard on when I do my, especially my music videos. I'm I'm looking for any little intricacies of the the audio that I can pull out of there. Absolutely. So. Where but are I'm, you? I'm actually. Hmm? Oh, I was going to ask you where you're at. Uh, I'm in a a place called Dunn, North Carolina, which is about. I can. I'm close enough to Fayetteville, Fort Bragg, to hear the bombs drop when they practice. Really. C-130s fly over every day. So wow. I'm real close to those guys, which is, you know, <laughs> kind of yeah. weird. But because they, I mean, when they practice, it shakes the windows because oh. they, oh, they oh yeah, bomb or whatever. I don't know, but it's boom, 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 boom. And and there's a gun range behind us. And it's a, I live in the country, but it's, 
it's weird living in the country. There's a lot of strange things. I used oh, to yeah. live in the city my life, and living in the country is very strange. It is. I know. A lot of weird stuff happens out here. Yeah. Yeah. Just yesterday, I mean, this, I think I sent you an email about this. Um, at about four o'clock, five o'clock, something like that, um, the power went out. And so I walked across to, uh, to see the neighbor. I said, you know, is, is your power? They said, yeah. And so I started checking around the whole neighborhood's out. And I'm like, well, what in the world? And finally the electrical company showed up and they said a squirrel had jumped on the transformer and, and blew the transformer and blew itself up. And I mean, who'd have thought, that's, you know, and that, and that sounds like their cover, but I think it probably did blow up, but I don't think it was probably a squirrel, you know? I don't know. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I think they're they're uh, pulling ether out of the air and selling us free energy. I think so. I, I think I can't so. Prove it. Yeah. I don't well, know. I don't. Well, I you know. Prove, I don't know. <laughs> I I think you you know I think we it is proven though. I mean it is that if you people have done experiments where they take balloons with a wire and they they get voltage. Uh, I remember Art Bell. You know old Art Bell. Yeah, yeah, I'm coast to coast fan. Coast to coast from back in the day, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. and Art Bell oh, used anymore. I, I just not anymore. Me. I agree, it's shit now. I passed it. But Art Bell used to say he would he was getting voltage off of his radio tower, and this was like 20 years ago. And he was like, I don't know. You can take a fluorescent light and stand under a high transmission power line, and it'll light up. Yeah, yeah. What's what's up with that? I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, was another thing is weird is I, just for giggles one night, I, I decided to trace my power lines um, to see kind of where they came from. And I had to trace them 45 miles away. And when I got there, all there was was a substation. And then I just quit tracing because it's like, where's this power coming from? Yeah. I mean, are they really transmitting that far without a substation? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I it just doesn't that didn't make I, sense. I mean, I mean, and and I don't know either. But it seems it seems like the wires could gather the ether, the wires alone, and then those. Um, what is it like? I think it's those ceramic the, things. The ceramic it's things on top of each other. Yeah, and, and it's acting. Little... It's acting as a capacitor, maybe. And so all you have to do is just charge those. A fractal antenna? Or, yeah. I don't know. There's something. And the, the way that those lines are, I don't, they're, it's a very strange thing. Um, I, I, Here's the way I look at it. And I know you, you know as well as I do that you can't prove most, a lot of this stuff. But this, in the speculation comes a lot of the answers. But we know that they used to produce free energy. And, and it's like, well, why did they quit? And then the question really is, how do you what makes you think they did yeah why would they quit yeah well and even 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 in modern times they retrofit a lot of the cathedrals to be transmission towers and they've cell phone all towers cell phone towers and it, it's like they recognize whether they recognize it or not they're drawn to you know, make some use out of it, just like they were in the old world. Whether they're aware of it or not, I'm sure the people hooking up the stuff are unaware. You know, and then somebody on top. No, they don't know. Yeah, but they somebody, but somebody else put in that work order and you know made that decision, and those people probably are a little closer to knowing. It's a compartmentalization. Mm -hmm. You know, I know. saw a video on uh, the substations of New York the other day. And how they were, and that was interesting, uh, done by a channel called Is History. Mm -hmm. And and they were just talking about the, and you look at these buildings and they look like old world buildings. And they had these huge transformers and huge power equipment in there. And um, they said that these transformers weighed like 70 tons. I mean, how are they moving those back in 1900? Oh, yeah. Physically moving them and put them inside of a building. Yeah. They would put two sets in each building. It's, I don't know. That just doesn't add up to me. No, no, and, and it doesn't. And it's kind of like, uh, like some people, you know, talked about moving those big blocks with pebbles, 
but i think you made a point like that's all nice if you have like a eight inch concrete underneath you but that's right. not gonna, that, that's not gonna do anything you that's know the first thing i thought is like every he, he's okay you had several channels talking about this thing at the same time and i'm thinking okay that is wonderful and neat how that guy's doing that but why are you not talking about the elephant in the room, which is he's on a concrete pad? Yeah, yeah. They didn't have if that luxury. Have concrete... Yeah. And even if you're on a horse, even if you have a big old block on a horse and buggy, again, if you're just in the dirt, that's not going to fare very well, you know? No, it would sink right in. It, it wouldn't work. You bring up, that brings up a good point, you know, because I kind of feel like what, what is new you know i was going to ask you even you know what what do you think's new i mean i see i see that all the time i see i see rehashing of of things talked about three years ago now and and i think we're in kind of a, that maybe that's the the step and maybe that's a good thing maybe people are just gonna just spread that around and just you know maybe there's another yeah. that's another phase you know there is like phase about where do we go from here? Because that's, that's so important we're in a transitional period where we're, you know, people like you and I are proving that it actually happened, but how it happened, why it happened and the details of that are where we need to go. But how do we get from where we are to where we need to be? I don't know. And I'm thinking about that. Um, one thing I'm, I'm uh, working on um, is, and I, I kind of found this. Okay. I don't know if you've seen my video on viaducts. Yes, yes, so, yes. Well, that came about that I, I came across that phenomenon um, doing research on Atlanta, Georgia, just because it's close to me. I, I thought, it, and nobody else seemed to be doing Atlanta. So I thought I'd look into Atlanta mm -hmm. and I realized it was a viaduct city. And so I collected all the data and I was going to do a video on it, but I just hadn't. And then I did an interview with uh, Campbell and then another interview with Martin. And I asked both of them in, the, in those interviews if they'd heard of viaducts. And the same response came from both fellas was, you mean aqueducts? And I say, no, viaducts. And they had no idea what I was talking about. And that kind of keyed me in to go, oh, okay, wait, I need to do something on this. And so I just threw together, I took all my data and just started going through it kind of live on, on a video and just pounding it out what I had. And you know, that video went like a rocket up to 7,000. And then all of a sudden YouTube clamped me and it went flatlined. Oh yeah. That's it, how the time it did that to now it's got like 400 views. So it went, straight up to seven and then it's got 400 since then and that was like three or four months ago so they clamped me so that let me know that might be something i need to do more on In yeah my atlanta i've already i've got a whole list of these cities people have been sending me mm -hmm. so I've got uh, already right now I've confirmed Cleveland and Cincinnati are viaduct cities. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to be the next two on my list to do probably Cleveland. Cause I have a lot more data on Cleveland, but uh, I'm talking about these city and I don't see, I don't know if, if people understand what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that they literally raised the level of the city with mm -hmm. roads yeah they started over it's like a new it's like a new slate yeah yeah, yeah. it's crazy now I'm... that's one thing and then of course my pavement light is something i i believe okay do you know you know what pavement light is oh yeah yeah okay i believe pavement light is an absolute fundamental key to mud flood research and i nobody seems to be like doing anything on they're, 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 they're the same they're the same thing they're the same they're they're awesome the the viaduct and the pavement lighting are both a solution that they came up with for these buried partially buried cities yes and it's and absolutely key it is if you okay let's say you're a, a forensic 
pathologist or, or a, a auto what do you call a guy that does autopsies oh uh, oh yeah oh, um, i think i think the guy that does the autopsy i, I can't remember the name. okay let's say you're that guy and you got a murder that comes in and the person's been stabbed in the chest okay with a knife do you look at the toe to 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 discover how the person died no you look at the stab wound mm -hmm. you look at the depth of the stab wound the, 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 the anomalies you look at the anomalous thing yes. not not what is fine but the, my point is that you look at the point of entry okay mm -hmm. now the mm -hmm. way i look at pavement light is if this is a building okay and the mud was raised where do you start your investigation uh, you start it at the point of contact mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where the knife went in. Yeah, and you, and you and you backtrack where, from there. If this is the mud and this is the building, and they connect, right? Mm -hmm. This is the new level. My point is that pavement light is right here. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, this needs to be looked at because this is the point of contact. And, and, you, and you've, I know you've seen the diagrams. I, I think I saw it on your video first. Hundreds of them, yeah. I, yeah. I, I have, I have enough data to do two more uh, pavement light videos already. I just hadn't got to it. Yeah, and 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 even on Wikipedia for pavement lighting, it shows, it shows that they just put a uh, they just cut, put a new road over, and the viaduct is the same thing. It's just like okay, new viaduct right <laughs> through the heart of the city. Everything else just gets a new street. It's crazy. It's crazy. And and they're not even hiding that. But but I think you, no. you were definitely the first person who talked about that. And well, it, it happened like this. I went I did the, the standard uh research on Seattle. And of course in Seattle you run across pavement light. The Seattle and Underground. So I thought, wow, that's really cool in the in the in the underground. You see mm -hmm. the pavement light. I said, What is that? And I started looking into it. The guy because the guy said pavement light. So I searched pavement light. And of course, you come across the Wikipedia page. And then I thought, wow, that's really interesting. I need to find more information on that. And so I started looking. And guess what? There was nothing. There was zero. Nobody had done anything. Nobody was talking about oh, it. Nobody oh, knew about oh, it. Oh, 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 oh. So here's so, right. so here was my thoughts when, when I saw this discovery of yours is it kind of reminds me of the facade. You know, um, this is another topic that I've been uh, – I, I tried to send you this about a year ago um, in a comment. And you actually got the message, but you, when you did a video on it, you screwed it up. Okay. But that's not your fault. That's my fault. Mm -hmm. Is about Lake Conibus. Yeah. Um, because you, the, the, the problem is that you can't, exp I hate comments. You can't talk to people on comments. Oh, it's yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's and I'm usually reading on my phone the comments. It's, it's like, it, <laughs> you can't transfer some things. But basically, um, what happened is that Static in the Attic, he did a video on Lake Conibus, and it was complete, it, his theory was completely ridiculous. He took a, an old map, and he, 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 then he took a Google Earth map, and he made, he said, okay, well, there's this point here on the old map, and then there's this point. And we know this is accurate, that this point exists and this point exists. And then he goes to Google Earth and he goes, okay, well, here's that same point And here's that same point. And he measures it with Google Earth. He goes, okay, that's 100 miles. Then he says, okay, if you take this over here and you measure it out on, on, on the map, it equals up to this much distance between this point and where the Lake Conibus is on the map. So then he goes back to Google Earth and he measures the same distance. And he says, okay, here's where Lake Conibus is. And I thought to myself, well, no, that's retarded. You, you can't use an old map in Google Earth to do the same measurement, number one. But then number two, I'm looking at Google Earth. And I thought, well, damn, there's Lake Conibus right in front of you. He totally missed it. And I still think you have got it a little bit missed too. Because mm -hmm. I, I saw your video the other day. Mm -hmm. But you're not far, Okay. It seems like it's more north. It, according to the old maps, it seems like it's more north. 
I think you... those maps are wrong. The the the, the old the ones with what shows it north. Mm-hmm. I think the ones where it shows it near Salt Lake City is more, uh, more let me, accurate. Let me see. Um, let me see if I can get a. Uh, let, let me show you on on Google Earth. Um, yeah, yeah. Can you share the screen? I should be. Let me give me a minute to open it up. I closed it down. Um, you know, you know. Before I forget, too. Go ahead. Do you think that pavement light? Do you think we made the pavement lighting before I forget, or do you think that? the facaders the maybe the phoenician facader because those pavement lightings are really advanced you know the way that they have the angles built into them to deflect i think that's too advanced for the early time period it's 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 advanced for now we don't even do we barely do things like that now you know like that's it's a good question i i I will state it like i will uh i'll put it like this originally when they put in the uh pavement light they put them in with uh, metal frames steel frames and they were uh, a problem they they had uh, what we call bullseyes in them and the uh, bullseyes um, were were popping out the ladies heels were busting them out okay and um so they they moved into the concrete the, the square with the concrete kind mm-hmm and but my point here is that number one, the metal kinds that they rusted over time, and it didn't take that much time, and they were breaking breaking down. And then the uh, the the other kind, uh, the, the concrete kind, um, they they uh, solarized because they had an element in there that changed the um, the color of the glass to purple. It discolored. Uh, it discolored and it did not take very long. Okay, now my, my point here is that if if the civilization that created this was so advanced, they, I think they would have realized that that wasn't correct. That they wouldn't have used it the way they did. Um, because but my my point is the pavement lights failed very soon, and that's why they started getting rid of them. But 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 that's, then again, like that past civilization might not have been wearing high heels either. You know. I mean, that's a stupid story, kind of, in a way. But I, it makes sense. I could see a high heel busting out a, a, one of them, you know? I mean, I could see that. But you I know, think that I, past civilization, I can't... Wearing high heels is kind of stupid, you know what I mean? It's probably bad for you, you know? And, the and only I, way that I could say that it's possible is that they raised the pavement light to the new mud flood level. Mm-hmm. I could go with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I also have to believe that why would a civilization that was so advanced put um, b- build where you had rooms un- in a basement underground? Well, well, because here's it just doesn't make here, any sense. Here, here's what I think. You know, we, we see the brick builders that come first, so it wasn't right. mud flooded then when it was all brick, and then it gets flooded. Then you have the second people that come. They facade over the brick. They put beautiful facade. They put the pavement lightings. They put the viaducts in. They fill in some of the canals and turn them into streets. Yes, and canals they, were definitely old world. Yeah, and, trains and, too. And then those and, pe- and then yeah. something else happens to those people, and then we come along. Then we come along. That's th- so. So we're looking yeah. at three. We're looking at three eras here, and I don't even. You know, it's beyond calling them Tartarian and Phoenician at this point. I mean, we don't know, but we're but what we see is three eras, and we being the third. Yeah, I, okay. I haven't done an, enough research to make up my mind what I think about the Phoenicians and and who was here and who did what and what mm-hmm. time. It almost because doesn't matter. It almost on... it it almost impedes the research. It impedes it. It's better well, to just look at the evidence and see what we're seeing, and then we can we can stick. Yeah, I'm so new to this. You have to understand, I've only been messing with, with this for, I don't know, maybe two years now. Um, so I feel very new to this, and I'm still trying to get my sea legs, and I don't want to come out with, with my ideas that I'm not solid on, and I'm not solid on the Phoenicians. It's like Martin goes on and on about Phoenicians. This Phoenicians, that Phoenicians, this Phoenicians. I know, that. I know, and 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 there. 
I know. And I don't know and, about that. And I use it generically. I use it generically. And, and I do I, too. And it's if I very, say something that looks Phoenician, I say Phoenician. It looks yeah. Phoenician. I say for, Phoenician. For, for me, I for me, it's when I'm saying Tartaria, it's 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 the old. I'm brain. saying old world. Old world. It's a better. It's better. But that that makes it difficult because we have again two stages of old world. We have whoever yeah. built it before it was mud flooded and before they had the need for viaducts and pavement lighting. Right. And then we have another great civilization that who cares what they're called, but they facade over the brick. They they build pavement lights, very advanced things to make make do of this, you know, post catastrophe. And then mm -hmm. they seem to to go away and we just cover everything up and we don't give a shit about anything nice. And we turn the, the pavement lighting into concrete. You know, we don't even care. We're like, just put a concrete and some steel over it and, and we're good. Forget about it. Well, uh, a topic I'm I'm trying to do the research on. I'm having a devil of time getting the, the data that I'm looking for is uh, brutalism mm -hmm. um, as a cover up for mud flood. Um, and I'm not talking about the structures of a building that's built in the brutalist um, fashion. I'm talking about brutalism as a facade covering. Have you have you looked into that? Oh, yeah. And they do. They do. And even I just recently talked about uh, Milwaukee and, and how it was a practice to take uh, these old brick buildings mm -hmm. and encase them in, in iron or steel yeah. eventually. Mm -hmm. And then facade over it. And it was right there. And they were telling yeah. us, oh, this was our, you know, this was the solution for this old cream city brick. This old, you know, pale brick. Like, I got some right here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me, let me, uh, let me show you this cannabis thing real quick. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's... Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay. 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 Get your bearings. You see Salt Lake City right here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to point out where you were pointing uh, in your... I don't think it was your last video, but your, it was either the last one or the one before that. Anyways, the, the, your your last Lake Conibus video. Okay. You pointed right in here. Is that oh, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That old map that I was showing, that guy was saying that those seven cities... Those right. seven cities of gold or, or whatever, you know, those seven, you know, cities were around okay. here. All right. Now here, I'm going to show you my theory on this. Okay. Okay. Get a, a, an image of Lake Conibus in your, in your mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You remember it? Look, you remember it looks like a heart in a way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on a lot of the maps. Okay. Now follow, follow my cursor. Oh, you're absolutely right. I see it now. I see it. You're absolutely right. That's okay, interesting. And that makes theory. sense. That makes sense because this is lower ground. This is 2,000 feet lower than this. It absolutely, this is 5,000 feet. And this is like 25 to 3,000 feet above sea okay, level. Okay. Let me preface that I, I don't, I can't prove this. this. This is just my theory. But here's, here it is in a nutshell. I believe that this area right here was Lake Conibus. If you look on the old maps, that lake is a big son of a bitch. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. Okay. Look, this right here is huge. Yeah. Then I think what happened was they exploded this thing. And I think that some of the water went this way and created Salt Lake City. And I think the reason that Salt Lake City is a salt lake is because of the same factor that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yep. I think they used the same technology and it created the same type of lake. But here's the other part of the theory. I believe that it blew out the bottom of the lake. And if you get down here and you follow Lake Co the, the Colorado River, it goes all the way down to the Grand Canyon. And I believe, this is my theory, that Lake Conibus, when it was exploded, that the bottom came out, okay? The southern end right here. Mm -hmm. And it blew down, ran down, created the Colorado River, or ran through the Colorado River, and then blew out the Grand Canyon and created the Grand Canyon. It looks like it. That's a great theory. I, I see it now. I see that hard shape. That's my theory. 
And you can tell. Just look at it. I can't prove it. Yeah. And the reason I wanted you to hear this theory is because you were close enough to actually do boots on the ground research on this. I don't have the ability to do that, but you do. And that's that's my theory. Take it. Run with it. I well, can't you know, do any more. I that, love it. I love it because you know what? On the old maps, have you seen the ones where there's a little castle in the middle of the lake? Yes. Yes. Well, I, look at look at that. Yes. Look at that. You got the LaSalle Mountains right there. You see that there? That's the LaSalle Mountains. On which side? Uh, down, down, straight down, straight down from your curse. There. That's the LaSalle. So if that was a lake, those peaks would have been sticking up right in the middle of the lake. Or maybe now, not. I'm, it, here's another part of this theory that, that it could be that this part of the area was also part of the lake right here, the part that you were looking at. But I also really believe that this part was a major portion of the lake because I believe if you follow this all the way down, it goes, and I know this for a fact, I've already done it. This right here is connected to the Grand Canyon. That is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, and so, that, that, so, that. if you follow the flow, you're just following the flow. And yes, I have I, never understood why in the world that they say that a glacier came through and cut out the Grand Canyon. I think that's such horseshit. Oh, yeah. And I do, yeah. I never have believed that. But and before I started making YouTube videos, I barely could use a computer. I mean, that's, I really didn't. Well, the reason, the, the way I got started doing uh, YouTube videos was uh, I was, uh, getting into mud flood research and and i saw michelle gibson's channel and i sent her a um a, a comment one one night about uh sacred geometry and i i guess i sparked her interest and she we started chatting back and forth over email and um she um was explaining how she was retired and how she didn't know how to do it she learned herself how to make the videos and everything and I thought, man, um, you know, my background is in this stuff. If she can do it, I don't see why I can't do it. And yeah. so I made a video. And sh when I got it done, I put it up on YouTube. And I had no subscribers. And I, I said, uh, hey, Michelle, I made this video. Check it out. She goes, well, oh, wow, that's really good. Can I put it on my channel? I said, I don't care. And she put it on there. And people seemed to like it. So I made some more. And anyways, then I took six months away. And I didn't go on the internet or anything and when i come back i had made the giants video i don't know if you've seen that um but i made the giants video and i went to look at uh six months later went to go look at my channel and see what had happened and everything and i had 650 subscribers and when i went on michelle's channel look at what the giants video it had uh it was like ten thousand hit that video went up to about sixty five thousand hits and then she, she removed it because she found out that she was getting all the views and I wasn't getting the views. And so she removed it so I would get the views. Mm -hmm. And so now my views are going up on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, that video has been solid gold. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Really good stuff. Okay, let me, uh, I'm going to share the screen. Um, and this is going to be the 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 mudden images. Um, let me know when you see it. Yep, yep. Okay, these are images that I've used in previous videos, and um, I have thousands of these. Um, but basically, the way I see, okay, the way I do this is I just grab a picture, I start off, I explain, I'll say, okay, this one says it was done in 1900, Pennsylvania Academy, to Fine Arts, Philadelphia, and I tell every bit of information I know about it, and I, I leave the picture up there so people can kind of get the image in their mind. Mm -hmm. And then I just jump in and I start looking at things, you know, and I talk about what I see and I move pretty fast. I can go slower if you want me to go slower. But like this image right here, I can tell you right now is Vanilla Sky. And have you seen my uh, video where I explain what Vanilla, how they did Vanilla Sky? No, I don't think so. Okay. It, this is real simple. What you're looking at here is what's called a glass negative. Okay. And this company is called the Detroit Photographic Company. And what they did was they had a train and they went across the country and they took these pictures. 
and then they would develop them and and then sell them as postcards and a lot of times they would colorize them but anyways for the postcards what they would do is they would do what we call vanilla sky but what they would do is they would go to the glass negative and imagine this is a okay have you ever seen a negative on a you know a regular negative a blown up negative okay or a, a piece of negative film yeah yeah okay well imagine this is a piece of negative film and it's big okay but it's glass it's not uh film the old okay? kind, yeah it's it's really old it's a glass plate negative mm -hmm. and what they do is they go in they take a razor and they scrape off what the, they don't want the, you to see the silver isn't it like a silver solution or something that they use something like that yeah mm -hmm. exactly and you can see right here remnants of where you they can didn't see. do it good oh yeah and that they, is your vanilla sky now yeah. why they did that i don't know i can, i'm not speculating on, see right there you see that right there mm -hmm. look at that it's cut off see that see that flagpole right there in the center and people that have speculated People have speculated that there were, you know, airships or, or maybe just a, it, maybe it just a crazy, yeah, it could be maybe just a crazy but city. How do you prove just, it? Just buildings that they don't want us to know were there even. I think that's more what they're, yeah. Mm -hmm. An example is uh, New York. See, I believe the Bronx was already there. For, specifically, I think the Bronx was already there. And I think in the old photographs, they, they, vanilla skied it out or something because mm -hmm. okay see those lines right there those are uh trolley lines or power lines and see they disappear they just go that's to nowhere sky. they go to nowhere huh? vanilla sky. you're absolutely so right that, that's uh that's so, how i do it yeah yeah what i see is basically uh you and i i'll 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 drive and and i'll you just tell me if i if i need to go faster or, or slower more than likely Mm -hmm. um and and i'll if if you want to look at something specific just tell me and and we'll just talk about these and we'll go um however long i usually go two hours but we can go longer if you want or shorter if you want but i usually do about 40 pictures in two hours mm -hmm. and um people really love this they 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 eat it up and i think having a, having your perspective on it, i think people really like i think people on your channel will really like that Oh yeah, well, yeah, I, I know. I'm sure you like I am. Where I'm always looking for a new way to do it, a new way to show it, because I get bored doing this. I want, I need some new blood. You know what I mean? Well, and I, 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 I and, and that's what inspired me eyes. to. That's what inspired me to 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 do a chat. You know, is is just for new new ideas. I mean, I don't want to do what I do. I don't necessarily want you to do what you do. You know, I, I almost want to just see what, what we think, you know? And, and like I said, if you have other ideas, I'm open to other ideas. Um, I, you know, I don't want, I, I feel like a broken record when I do my mud and videos, even though people love Oh, and me too. And me too. That's why I like my other channel. I use my off topic channel to just get a little crazy, you know, and, and, and just, and I need that. I need to like talk about other things, you know. You asked earlier about being off grid. Um, here I didn't I didn't uh, explain that. Um, Thirteen and a half years ago, in two, January two thousand eight, I woke up, and I mean, woke up abruptly, like out of a dream, like overnight. Um, I watched a video on, you know, I I used to drink, and you know drink like a fish and smoke I, I smoked and two packs of marlboros a day and you know i was that you know i worked it a lot and, and it, it was just rough it was a, i was just a regular everyday sheep you know did everything everybody else does mm -hmm. and um i had a the satellite and uh i put a, you know how you you've got 90 channels of you know nothing on and you push the dvr and record something that you don't know what it is but you're just tired of watching everything else and you you watch something you never would have watched before well at one o'clock in the morning a, a a dvr recording came on um of a show and it was a documentary about 2012 and i said to her, my girlfriend i watched this and when it got done i looked at her and she looked at me i said what the hell was that she goes i don't know and i jumped over the couch and we we both ran the computer and i got there first 
And I spent the next two weeks in the computer waking up because one thing led to another, led to another, led to another. And two weeks later, I looked up from my desk. She was sitting opposite me and uh, she was reading a book. And, and I looked and I said, I'm going to sell everything I own. I'm going to go live in the woods. Wow. And she says, can I come with? And I knew that she was not going to be able to handle what I was going to do. So I said, sure. And she only handled about three months of it. And then she said, okay, I've had enough. And I was glad because it was, I needed to be alone. I needed to be, I needed to wake up. I needed to Process. get my consciousness straight. And so I went and lived in a tent for a year and I traveled around and um, the North Carolina mountains and lived in there for a year. And it was absolutely heaven. I loved it. But the homesteading law was kicking my ass. I don't know if you know what that is, but basically the law is that you, you can, when you go to camp in a spot, you can only camp there for a maximum days. of two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then you have to, you cannot come back to that same spot for 30 days. And so every two weeks I was having to move. Yeah, that's and that's hard. not that easy. When no. you have to pick up and go find a place and move overnight. You can't progress. That's the worst because you can't progress. You have to start all over. And that's the yes. worst thing. that That's what ruins people's lives, I think, is starting over. And sometimes you might just think, oh, this will be a good thing. And I've done it and been like, oh, I'm just going to do this. And I start over and I don't really think about it. But you have to start over. And it's like going backwards. Traumatizing. And yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm mostly off grid. I, I actually tapped into the water. That's the only yeah. thing I tapped into. I was like the water. It was about 1500 feet. And I had to dig a trench uh, four feet deep. And I hooked up to the water and, and I'm like, you know what, that's worth it. You know, 30 bucks a month for 6000 gallons. And yeah. I have backup systems. I have a backup tank that I can store 600 gallons buried under my house. Um, but yeah, I don't think, I don't think, you know, we have to be like totally off grid, but if, but if anything happened, we can easily default. We're already there. You know, maybe I lose my water, but I still have my rain catchments and I still have my backup tank. And it's I'm, all about I, my water's better. I'm on yeah. a well and I have it designed so I can use a pulley. Mm -hmm. and um so I, i'm prepared for that my, when i talk about uh living off people talking about preparedness i freak people out when i tell them what what my first things are i say first i say where's your water mm -hmm. that's the first question i ask people when i'm talking about preparedness they kind of give me a weird look because they've never thought about that yeah. where is your water i ask important. you the same question where's your water Let, let's say you have grid down where's your water my 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 rain catchments um, okay. and then i have a river and i i have a little stream i have a little stream and if it's there winter you go. if it's winter time and there's snow everywhere there's my water in the winter and there always there is every, yeah okay now how do you get to your water that's the next question um it's simpler for you but think about yeah. this Okay, let's take yourself out of the equation. Talk to a city person. Yes, yes. It's a difference your if water. you're in the city. Exactly. Yes. I, or they, even in the suburbs. Yeah. Where's or your where, water? Or where's, yeah. Where Now they have to think, well, where's my nearest stream? <laughs> you know, hey, really. Okay, I'm in the country and I say, where's your water? And people always, their answer is, we're on well water. I'm like, okay, well, how do you get it out? They're like, with the pump. Yeah, I'm like, you have no electricity. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll get up with a bucket. I'm like, oh, have you ever done that? See, yeah. I've done that. I've actually designed a pulley system to see how hard it is to get water, water out of a well. It's hard. I bet. It's I bet. I, I bet because <laughs> you probably have to have some water in it to get it going. Otherwise, otherwise you can't just drop a bucket in there. It's just going to float, right? Well, first thing you need is a good bucket. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need a good, strong bucket. Not a five-gallon bucket. They don't work. Mm -hmm. Second thing is you need to put weight in the bottom of the bucket Excellent. so that when the bucket goes down, that it drops into the water. Mm -hmm. The next thing you need is a good rope. The next thing you need is a well pulley. Those antique well pulleys, mm -hmm. you need one of those, okay? 
And then the next thing is, where do you store your water? Yeah. Okay. And then the next thing is, how do you purify your water? Yeah, because your water will start getting green if you're just going to leave it up, uh, you know, up on the surface. Mm -hmm. And that's and my easy. next thing is, people say, okay, well, where do you go from there? And they expect you to say that you go to food. I don't go to food. The next place I go is, how are you going to cook your food? You know, like, oh, we're going to, we'll just make a fire. I'm like, out of what? Fire, we'll get wood. Okay. Have you ever gone out in the woods and looked for wood? Okay. Yeah. First off, when you get wood out there, yeah, you find a little bit of wood lying around, but it's usually wet or it's really rotted. The next thing is you have to cut a tree down. Do you think green wood burns as good as, as cured wood? No. Okay. So here's my suggestion. Buy a Coleman cooker. Buy as much propane as you can. Oh, that brings up a good point. Hey, listen to this. Have you heard of this? This is my next off-grid investment. Okay. It's it's called a gasifier. And you so, it's it's a it's a like a 55 gallon bag, like a thick, thick bag. I'm sure they have them in different drums and different, it's like a composter basically. And you're just putting your 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 scraps in there, you know, oh. like you're composting. And that yeah. methane builds up. I saw it on YouTube. I, and these people have like a, um, a little off-grid channel. And they were like, oh, our gasifier. And they were just cooking with their methane, with their whatever they could throw in there. And I was like, uh, damn, that, I, everyone needs that. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the reason I, I suggest propane Coleman cookers is no I, use one, a pro, I use a propane cheap. i use one i use this the that's lame one with the bottle and it has the little just that real simple one that's been my that's been my kitchen for 15 years same here <laughs> same here but the reason i tell people to do that is number one that a coleman cooker is cheap number two propane is cheap and number three and this is the real key to um a coleman to, to propane cooking in a grid down situation, in the beginning, you know that it would be pure chaos. And you don't want to be outside trying to light a fire and cooking a steak or cooking some beans and having smoke rise and having smells come out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Propane, you don't have any smoke. Yeah. Not to mention you could do it indoors where you're safer. Mm -hmm. So that's why I suggest that. And I then from there, I go to salt have plenty of salt um i have a book here the history of salt somewhere uh looking into the history of salt salt is critical yeah it's like so a much more critical have than you seen those old salt refrigerators it's refrigerator old. yeah they no. have old old antique refrigerators and and they're just set up to just pack salt all over and it pulls all the moisture out and no bacteria wow. can grow my neighbors oh, crazy growing up had one in their garage and i used to trip out i'm like what kind of era did this thing come from even as a child i was like this is crazy salt fridge you know that is crazy so i don't know this 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 whole that that's that's about the the just from there you i think you just go in, I, I stay away from the meals ready to eat and all that crap but i you know i go simple go go simple peanut butter instant potatoes um buy uh powdered creamer um for your milk um you know simple thing keep it simple stupid I, stuff. I, for for me i think that one of the ultimates is chickens my chickens can just eat, chicken or my chickens about? they just eat they can just eat whatever's laying around and make me eggs there's enough little bugs and enough yeah. little grasses and they're just they they eat everything. They they just completely. They turn do. It. They're very unpredict. You. It's really hard to predict chicken. That that's a great prep. Um, I keep that kind of in my secondary category because literally I've I've had chickens and they'll just drop dead. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll quit laying. Um, the, the foxes get them. Something or, always kills my chickens. You're absolutely yeah. right. Every chicken of mine has died. Now I have seven more, but. Every chicken has got eaten by something, so. Yeah, I, th I think it's wonderful to have chickens and rabbits too, but uh, I, I definitely, I, I look at more like, what can you count on? 
you know what and people like well, well we'll get beans see i went out to sam's and i bought a hundred i don't even know how many 500 pounds of beans and then i went to cook them and it would take four hours on the propane stove to cook them mm -hmm. are you kidding me did you soak them first did you like soak them for 24 hours then it takes two hours mm -hmm. it, it still took forever so i learned that you have to uh, you, you got to be careful about, and I'm talking about your basic preps. I'm not talking about, like, I, I'm talking about your shit hits the fan preps. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the basic preps, you know, rice. People think, oh, I got big hundred pound bag of rice, but that rice takes a long, lot longer to cook. I say get instant rice because it cooks a lot quicker in propane. You don't want to waste your propane. I've got one of those little solar ovens too. And you just put that thing, and I love my, I cooked the whole Thanksgiving in my solar oven one one year. I can't get it out now, right? I, I got a, uh, you remember those old big screen televisions, the flat screens that were about 52 inches, mm -hmm. and they had the Fresnel lens on the front? Mm -hmm. I've got one of those Fresnel lenses, and you can make a uh, solar cooker with those things. You, can make, you could take a window and and build it, build a little box. <laughs> a hot box. And, yeah, exactly. Solar That's box. All, I, you could do the same thing for a solar hot water heater. It could be the yeah. same thing for a, a little oven. And you know what? You never burn. It never burns. But I, my little solar oven can get 400 degrees, but it'll never burn. It will never yeah, burn anything cool. in there. Yeah. I love those. Those are really neat. Mm -hmm. Really neat. Re I, I like that a lot. Very cool. Anyways, that that's a uh, that's about that's about that. It um, um, that's fascinating. You know, that's that, your story is fascinating. It's like the minute you realized it, you just went boom, and you didn't turn back. You know, that's a big thing that I'm thinking about right now because that's the that's the most important thing. Housing, I think, for getting right with yeah. with your with where you are and your house and your water and your food, the very basic basic things. Are, are the most important basic things yeah, yeah. I, I i've uh you you can't behind my this is a green screen okay mm -hmm. um but behind here is my bookcase and i have a thousand books behind me you can't see mm -hmm. i don't i don't want people to judge what i read i don't want <laughs> nit people, the ninnies ninny in me um and i think it looks better but behind me i have a thousand books okay and i've read every one of them and most of them I've read four times. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've, I'm an avid reader and I love books. And, and I did the same thing for a while, but then I, I was like, you know what? I, I need to exist yeah. in both worlds. I did too. I, I, I stayed off the internet for 10 years. And the only reason I came back to the internet, well, see, I used to, I used to run a business that was internet based. And so seven days a week, I worked every day. I worked, I had a 40,000 square foot warehouse and I ran an internet business and it was draining me physically and mentally because I, I could never walk away because there was always an opportunity to turn on the computer and make money. I was making money hand over fist. And it, it was, it was, I, I put myself in that position I, I wanted to, to build a business. I wanted to make it work. I made it work, but it was killing me. And so I stayed off the internet for 10 years and it was beautiful. It was wonderful. And I read my books. That's when I did all my, my reading. And but then um, I started working uh, handyman work in order to make money to, there's things you need. Mm -hmm. And so I would, as I would need more money, I would do more work. And so there was a lady, uh, elderly lady that I did worked on her house and stuff. And, uh, we became pretty good friends. And one Christmas, um, she invited me to Christmas with her family, uh, her husband and, uh, her daughter and, and we had Christmas and their, their family bought me a laptop for Christmas because they wanted me to be able to do my research and they didn't know how I could use it to do my research, but they thought it would help. Mm -hmm. And so they bought me a laptop, which was, whoa, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect that. It was like, wow, you know, 
And um, so I started going on back online and researching on the internet these things that I had been studying in books for 10 years. And I was learning some new things. And that's when I ran across uh, Jet Fuel Hoax. And Imagine. then I ran into Flat Earth. Mm -hmm. and oh, then, really? Jet Fuel yeah. first and then Earth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Because I had not gone down those. Well, I didn't know about I had heard of Flat Earth, but I thought that was cuckoo clock stuff, you know. And I'd never looked into it, but uh, when I saw Jet Fuel Hoax, it, it kind of made me go, well, let me look into the Flat Earth because that's, you know, something goes going right on along there. with it. Yeah, it goes right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in the process of that, I saw mud flood and I kept seeing these uh, damn windows and doors below ground. And I have a background also in construction and I knew that wasn't right. I knew, I knew that was something wasn't right. I see these pictures over and over again. And um, I kept searching windows and doors below ground, windows and doors below ground. And I couldn't find anything. I'm like, what the hell are these people talking about? Six months, I'm typing this in the computer and I could not find any information on it. But I knew I knew I was on to something. I knew it was important and I could not. I didn't know what mud flood is. I'd never heard. You know the what? Word. That's what's important about the <laughs> even Tartaria, even though it's wrong. That's what was important about it, because now it had a name. It had something. It's Coke. Okay, when I say, hey, go get me a, I, you say, what would you like to drink? I say, I want a Coke and you bring me a Pepsi or mm -hmm. a Mountain Dew. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's not that I wanted a Coke, it's that I wanted a soda. Mm, a cola. A carbonated beverage. Yeah. Okay, but I call it a Coke mm -hmm. because it's the most popular thing. It's like when I say Tartaria, I don't mean, I'm not talking, yes, there was a country called Tartaria. Yes, they were wiped off the, the face of the planet. However, I'm not saying that that Tartaria is all there was. I'm saying old world. Yeah. Because if I say old world, people think of Europe. Yeah. Well, at least that's what I think of. Yeah. And so I say Tartaria, but then I also preface it by saying old world. Yeah. Kind of back it up. But and I've done that more and more as I've learned that because people, but they, the ninnies are, yeah, Tartaria, Tartaria, yeah, 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 yeah. And it just, it's like, dude, pull your head out of your ass. Cause I mean, you know, you, you, everybody wants to i know they do it to youtube they ninny you on every little thing you say <laughs> mm. it's like the other day i just in the in the in uh one of my videos i said just i try to throw little nuggets out there for, to kind of spark people's interest and i just said yeah it's like you know the satanists don't believe in a, a entity called satan they don't believe in satan and of course people are like the hell are you talking about you and i'm like come on people this is go wiki search satanism or uh satanic church and you're going to read in there it clearly states that they don't believe in an entity called satan they don't believe in satan it was made up by the church and they say in their doctrine in their bible that they it they do not believe there is a figure an actual person or a demon or a figure or an entity they do not believe there is a satan it's just a matter basically it's do as thou wilt it, it's their saying it's their way of saying do as thou wilt they don't mean it as we worship all satan no no it has nothing to do with it but they know the church thinks that and so they like ha ha they're laughing at the church. But if you, I'm serious, you, it, I might be telling you something you've never heard. Go wiki, go search Church of Satan or Satanism and read it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it'll clearly tell you, it, even in the wiki, that they do not believe in an entity or a figure or a person mm -hmm. called Satan.
Now, I'm not talking about Luciferianism. Whole different bag. They're two, and that's another thing. People put those together. They say Satan, the devil, and Lucifer are the same person. They're not. They're not at all. And people don't know that. And people need to know that. They're, they're three. Well, the devil and Satan are the same thing. Okay, the church made those up. Lucifer is a different character altogether, but they've grouped them together. The church did this. What about who's the one in the book of Job? Uh, I would probably say Satan. And, 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 God, and God says, he's like, hey, where have you been? And he's yeah. like, oh, I've been inside and outside, within and with, without the earth. You know, like he was. And they're just having a chat, right? They're just chatting it up. Yeah. He's like, oh, you, you know, where have you been? If you go back to the old Jewish Bible in, in the original translation, all Satan, it, when, Satan translated really all it means is adversary. That's all it means. It doesn't mean there's an entity, there's a person or a demon that called Satan. It's an adversary. It, it's their way of saying adversary. Yeah, yeah. But people don't know this. See, I grew up, the first 18 years I was Christian. Okay, so I've been indoctrinated a whole lot about that. But then when I woke up, I studied every religion around the world throughout time, all the major ones. And so I'm well-versed in knowing that it's all the same thing, man. Mm -hmm. It's all the same control me mechanism. I don't care what religion you're looking at. It's all the same God. It's all the same control just from different countries, different times, you know, and it, it's people don't know this. They, they don't realize they're being used and controlled through these religions and anyways I'm a, a and, 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 and and god has been hijacked you know oh yeah i i, I do believe <laughs> in i do believe in god you know oh, no. but it's not <laughs> but it but it's it's so beyond anything that could be printed or or you know uh described in these books and no oh. it's so backwards but there is a force there is a force that and there and it's a caring force it's a it's a playful force and it, it, it can speak to you through animals or wind yes, or, or through yourself. And you'll just understand. And you're like, this is much more intelligent than me, but something gives a shit, you know, and, and thank you. And that, you know, Definitely. that is the greatness. But I think they don't teach that. And, and maybe some religions teach that. I, maybe some that I don't know well, of really, you know. Well, there's, if you, Every now and then, uh, I, I'll uh, watch some sort of uh, religious thing just to see kind of what they're up to these days. And it's funny because they're sneaking in these new uh, philosophies of, of, of uh, you could say new ageism, but they're trying to sneak these things in now, but recovering them in a Christian facade. And so it's very interesting to me what's going on with that. Um, I'm a pantheist. Uh, that's what I consider myself. I don't know if you know what that is, mm -mm. but basically, uh, okay, okay. First off, a pantheist. Any anybody you ask what a pantheist is will tell you a different answer. Um, it depends on who you're talking to. But the basic, uh, I'm trying to give an example. Um, okay, here's a, here's a bottle of ibuprofen. Okay, I believe that the creator is this bottle of ibuprofen, okay? But I also believe that the creator is this little pill of ibuprofen and every molecule of the ibuprofen. I believe that the creator is everything, every element, every molecule. It's the ether in between. The creator is all. The creator is you. The creator is I. Yeah, okay? yeah. That we are a piece of the creator. Um, I believe uh, Alan Watts had it said best where he talked about God is playing hide and seek. And basically God is a, God, would, the creator, call it, I call him Bob sometimes because I just think that's funny. Mm -hmm. But the creator, the universe, okay, is sitting there and the, the creator is this dot, okay, of, of one thing and there's nothing else and the creator's like i am you know the all knowing all seeing all everything right then the creator's like you know i really wish i could ex you know experience myself so the god created the universe or universes and then the god said well that's good but let me also create 
souls. And I'll have these souls go out with no knowledge of who or what they are. And their job is to find their way back to me and experience my creation on the way back. And as they're experiencing, I'll be experiencing myself being myself. Mm -hmm. It's almost like all the eyes, the thing behind the eyes, the light behind the eyes of every creature, but it's not just creatures with eyes because it's the trees, it's the wind, it's everything. But right. I, I, I really look at the, especially it's very apparent in the eyes. I mean, I'll drive by a horse and I see the eye and I'm like that. There's more behind the eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the windows to the soul. Um, uh, pantheism, by the way, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, um, paganism. Even though it sounds like it, it has nothing to do, to do with paganism. Uh, look, pantheist, pan, P-A-N, theist. Check mm -hmm. it out sometime. Mm -hmm. you know, I think you'll find that really interesting. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's everything. It's like, how do I make the, vi people ask me all the time, how do you make the videos that, you, the, like the music videos? How do you make that? Like, how do you put that together? How do you put this film with that music? And I don't, I just tune out and let the universe drive. Oh my, I do the same thing. And you know what? And, <laughs> and, and, so, and it blows me away because sometimes like an image will sync with the music and i'm like i yeah. didn't do that but it was perfect it absolutely had uh, i didn't do it. it it's something is helping me as long as and i think yep. that's how that's how it works as long as we're willing to take that step you know and use these random elements then the rest we the rest will come together there's something greater i'll write in my journal yeah i, I haven't written in the journal for a while but for years i and I do every now and then when something profound comes along, I write in the journal, but sometimes I'll be like angry in the journal and sure. I'll write an angry paragraph and then I'll be still for a minute. And then the next paragraph is profound. It's like, it's, it's, it's more intelligent than me. That next paragraph, it's, it's a, it's something higher that, that comes in and it and it came from me, but it's it's more than me, and it, and it's completely answers or balances out that first part and kind of corrects everything, and it's fascinating. Well, a lot of people look at the yin yang and they say, "Oh, that's the you know the the light chasing the dark," and it's not. You have to ha you cannot have the light without the dark, and you cannot have the dark without the light. Mm -hmm. It's balance. Yeah. Oh, I feel right now, I feel like evil is attacking me, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All of us. And, so, you know, it comes and it comes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and yet I thought to myself, you know, is evil just serving good? Is it just pushing good? Because what this evil did is it upset me. And then I said, well, now I have to do what's good. Now I have to, I didn't want to. I've been mulling over this for a long time. And if evil would have just left me alone, I wouldn't have, I just wouldn't have done anything. I might've just sat on this. And now evil comes in and I'm like, oh, okay, now I, I must do this. I must, mm -hmm. because evil has prompted me to do good. So it got me thinking, yeah. is evil just a serpent of good again? Just pushing that almost like a magnetic uh, perpetual you know i i've had i've i've been to the dark i have s looked into the abyss i have seen the darkness i have been to the darkness in my life i've had dark times oh yeah i think we all so have. but i have also learned just as much from the dark as i have the light mm -hmm. and i see these guys on on uh youtube now um like Infinite Waters, if you've ever heard of him, um, he's a really great awakened soul, and he does you know great videos talking about awakening, and he's he's very light. But you know, you gotta have the dark. I'll throw a video. I did this last week. I'll throw a video on YouTube sometimes that's dark, and I do it to balance out my channel because I want to shake people's. I don't want people to focus in and say that big the stuff big was this okay i want to shake the pot i want to freak them out and make them think wait what's going what is going on here i don't want them to be comfortable oh, i yeah. want them to always be on their toes thinking 
and us you know, too and and us too by you know, you know i think that the things that you're creating you're going to take on those attributes so if you're just creating the same thing then you're you're going to stagnate as well i mean i think right i, I constantly love to you know find new subjects and you brought so many new subjects like right off the get-go to the mud flood topic the the flat earth asterisks have you i haven't done a video on this but have you caught on the, the my flat earth asterisks theory yeah yeah um that's something yeah, that i yeah, came they, across because yeah mm -hmm. i i was looking at these pictures and i kept seeing that damn symbol on all these buildings and i kept thinking what the hell is that on all these buildings for? I thought it was some sort of uh, design that was popular. And I started looking into it and there's literally no information about this thing. And so I started thinking, well, why are they putting this on that building? And then I started looking at it and, and, and thinking about how it could be work out. And, and then I started researching and trying to find what that symbol is. And the only symbol that I found that matched that symbol is the eight point asterisk mm -hmm. and i thought well that's a horrible name for it but that's what it is and so i realized that if you consider the the horizontal being the flat earth and then the vertical being the north south magnetic pole and then the x being the torus it's so simple and then you can actually take that image and turn it different directions and it actually works in other directions as well oh like three-dimensionally even like we're just yes. Seeing, yes, yes 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 it works three-dimensionally as well mm -hmm. um so it, it's actually a extremely simple yet in, intelligent design mm -hmm. and i have been point i haven't done a, i should do a video on it but i haven't done i have been Every time I see it, I point it out to people, and people are catching on to it now. I do FE equals eight point asterisk equals FE, and and I do FE because you know if you say if you do flat Earth or use some sort of flat Earth in your video, they they want to flag it flat Earth. Mm -hmm. I put a GIF in there that I pulled off Google one time that didn't say a word about flat Earth. It was just a flat Earth model, and it was a GIF that went around with the sun and the moon. And they gave me flat earth tag. I'm like, yeah. And I, it wasn't in a, a video on flat earth. I'm like, what in the world, man? This is stupid. I how, know. how can they do that? Yeah. yeah. YouTube is so they're, they're, oh man, they're going down. I don't know. Yeah. How, it's, how, it's, are it's, you into organite? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't have any, but yeah, I think it's awesome. I, 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 I put that sucker on in 2008 and ain't taken off since it. It's uh. Have you ever read anything of uh, <laughs> of uh, Drunvalo Melchizedek? Have you yes. ever read it? I liked his stuff. At least there was a book called Living in the Heart. Did you ever read that one? Yes, yes. 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 And Didn't they, they have had... a Taurus on the cover? Yes, yes. Like yes. a heart and a Taurus. Yes. No uh, yes. Tetrahit. No. Uh, uh, te uh, uh, what's the, the triangle uh, shape? Yeah, I think um, it is a, te a tetra, a star tetrahedron, or tetrahedron. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. It had that inside of a Taurus, inside of a man on yeah. the cover. Yeah, and and yeah. that he he was really interesting because they were making devices that r reminded me of uh, was it Wilhelm Reich? Yes, but they were making small devices like cloud busters, like small boxes that would basically like turn a gloomy day into a nice sunny day. Yeah. And yeah. And then they started doing it from within. They didn't even need shit. They would just tune their heart to this place. And, and now it was like, and I think that's kind of what it comes down to is like, we are ultimately this, this machine meant to harness this ether and this organ and everything that we do, every backwards thing that we do in this world is almost to keep us from that. You know, watch the news, take this, uh, take that, you know, and, and, and run yeah. this program and to completely be disconnected, you know, even, even what we eat. I don't even know if we need to eat. I don't, I mean, I think it's, it's, I think you have the option where, where obviously have you heard of the breatharians. I'm totally into it, but I don't think it's just breath though. It, it should be called, uh, etherarian. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's what they do. They call but, it breatharians because but breath, but it's going through the breath, and you're absorbing it through the breath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a. Uh, I think I think I think you're right about that. I, you know, and that goes back to why are there no toilets? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's something to that. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt that there's no toilets in these buildings. Mm -hmm. I and had a I had a friend about 20 years ago who was telling me about Buddhists that ate perfectly. It's not like they did, they weren't breatharians, but they just would eat like a little bit of rice every day, mm -hmm. and they didn't right. shit. They didn't. There was no waste. Like waste was like okay, your system was designed just in case. Okay, yes. but but it wasn't necessarily like. That's not how it's supposed to be, you know, like you're, you're actually just supposed to burn that up and, uh, you know, but you have that system or maybe you get ill and you need to eliminate once in a while, but it's not a necessarily. backup system. Yeah. Yeah. Like or a backup an emergency system. escape system or, yeah. you know. Yes. Yes. Just yeah. in case, just in case maybe uh, the mush mushroom or I don't know, maybe the air is, is funky or maybe the air or the ether is less and, and that's the creator knowing, okay, sometimes they're going to need to eat solids and sometimes the, the, the atmosphere or the, the, the air is going to be so good that uh, they'll grow big and, uh, and, and they won't even need much. And I think there was a possibility of things uh, like vegetables and plants and things like that being bigger in the past. We've um, seen that in, the the old, in, in old depictions. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I and everything, I th and I think that's how the giants ate. I think they had bigger food. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. they're not just going to eat. They they did, and if we're to believe, they're not going to eat the little food we eat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's miniature everything. There, there's variations. Of course, it would have gone. It would have gone on. I remember even before I got into this subject, I was for some reason studying grapes, and the French were saying, "Oh, we never." We never like planted these grapes, you know, now we do. <laughs> they were like, now we do. But they were like, these grapes are always here. It was as if they had already been cultivated. And this is before I even researched this. And I was like, my mind was blown away. I was like, wow, you know, somebody had cultivated those grapes, you know, and they just improved on them. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, you're not just having grapes and. You know, it's like I was thinking just yesterday about how, you know, the old stories are that people went thousands of years without electricity and they cooked over fire and they we, we didn't have toilets and or indoor plumbing and they just didn't have any amenities. And then all of a sudden around 1800s, 1850, we start inventing all these things. And by 1900, we're the Jetsons. And I started thinking about that. Why the hell do we believe that? Who the hell is going to sit around for 6,000 years and do nothing but sit by a campfire or a, a little lantern at night and not progress or, or <laughs> run out in the middle of the freezing cold to take a shit? I mean, who the hell is going to sit around for 6,000 years and not come up with a better idea? But then at the same time, they show us buildings that are, and they even tell us, oh, this is from, you know, BC. And it's just beyond comprehension. You're like, well, how could they have been some primitive campfire sitting individuals and have built this uh, coliseum or something? You know. Did you see the thing that Mind Unveiled showed the other day about the the newspaper article? Oh yeah, yeah. And that, that's that's. Uh, I made a video on that two years ago. That's a good example of something that the Rafterman's Journal. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. That's, it's it's legit. It's legit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this thing's. How do you even make this stuff up? I know. I know. And it's absolutely there. amazing. I. It's there. And, and it seems like more and more is coming up. You know, every day it's like uh, somebody's finding a new uh, Tartary in a book, or you know, the Tartarians were here, the Tartarians were there. A new map. It's well, like well, that bring, that brings me back to my planet. point. That brings me back to my point too. Like what? What do you think matters, you know? I mean, really. Like, there, there's a part of our community that, that won't agree on the flat earth, for example. You know, I, I sprinkle it in, but I'm very, I feel like I sprinkle it in, but I pull the stinger out, 
so it's more palatable i don't but, focus on it yes but it yeah. but it's huge it's important but i feel like we've just jumped beyond that i and, when and, i woke up to a uh, flat earth it really freaked me out um for about six months i yeah man finding out that the stars weren't stars and the planets weren't planets and the moon wasn't the moon and the sun wasn't the sun. Like that idea really messed with my head. I, I'd go out at night and just stare up and would just be miserable. And, and it was depressing thinking about the fact that I had been lied to about that because it was so, I used to think about like past love, you know, and think, I wonder if they're looking at the same moon I am, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then I'm thinking that's not even real anymore. Like, and it, I have childhood memories of going to, um, uh, the planetarium and going to we went to a telescope up in the mountains when i was in fourth grade and we looked up at the stars and i i know that stars aren't real now and it, it's it's that really messed with me for a little while i've gotten over it but it messed with me to, to realize the earth isn't round like i've been told that yeah. that was hard and, and um, you're flying through space at a, yeah. at a million miles an hour <laughs> and you know, some of these things, some of these concepts are harder to grasp than others. And that one, for, for some reason, was really hard for me. Um, I don't know why. I really don't. I don't. I know. I know why. That's, that's just, the first. That's the first lie you were told, really. You know, I mean, besides like, you know, Santa Claus or something. I mean, you went to oh, school. Yeah. You went to school and they were like, here's your reality. And you're like, OK. And that's it. You know, that's why it's so hard. It's the first thing you learned. And then, like, you learned about Christopher Columbus, maybe, after that. Oh, uh, have you caught on the, to uh, Dane Calloway yet? Oh, yeah. His research? Yeah. Good. Um, I'm definitely trying to push his channel out to people because I think he's, he's not a mud flutter, but I think he is on to a very important aspect of the research. The past and, civilization, yeah. You know, I, I think he's very accurate in what he's saying um i just wish he would go a little deeper and get the mud flood but he is definitely on to some stuff well um, it so seems it kind of seems implied if, if he's going to talk about a past civilization being here then it's implied that that they were the past civilization you know right so, uh, he, he doesn't go past that his main focus is trying to say, look, we're, this is not what the story of slavery is not what we we're told. We were already here. That's as far as he goes. Mm -hmm. And I, he, I wish he would go further, but I understand well, where he's yeah, coming from. Well, what do you think being from, uh, being from the South, you know, you're in the South, you know, I, I trip out on that. I mean, do you think that the southern hospitality is a remnant of a past civilization because that's really interesting like where does this uh you know culture come from you know it, it fascinates me and i and i love the southern hospitality oh, oh that's that's tough it, i i tell you here that's a tough question i'd have to think, I have to think about that one a little bit I, I i never really you don't really think about your own thing you know like that yeah, I'd have to yeah. think about that one. Oh, yeah. I tell I, you, here's my theory on what I think happened when it comes to uh, blacks in America. Um, and this is a nutshell version, but I believe that, do you know who Monsu, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this, Masu Mansu or Mansu Masu, uh, the richest man in history? Mm. Uh, oh, uh, ah, shoot. Uh, okay. I can get you anything you need on this, but he, um, uh, there's a, um, there was a, an African king in Mali. Um, his name was, I believe it's Mas, Man, Masu Mansu, and Masu means emperor. And he was uh, a, the king of Mali, um, and he was the richest man in history. This is recorded as he was literally the, by far, richer than any man in history, okay? And he was so rich that when he did his trip to Mecca, he went through Egypt and he ruined the economy, giving out so much gold for seven years. It just totally decimated the economy. Gold became worthless. Wow. Okay. But he is not who is important. 
who is important as he who he succeeded. And um, uh, Akbar the second, I believe is his name, um, was the emperor before him. And this, he, oh, you're gonna love this. I can't believe you hadn't heard this. Mm. He sent 200 ships east on the Atlantic Ocean, and their job was to find the Atlant the end of the Atlantic Ocean and report back. The ships went out. One came back. When he came back, he said, they were all sucked up into a whirlpool. We were lucky to survive. There's nothing out there. He calls bullshit. He has 2,000 ships built. He loads up his ships with his people and his, with, with, with a lot of his people, with enough supplies, and they sail east, and we're never seen again. recorded history really? okay here is my theory and i believe that this i have i am collecting data on this for a video i believe that this is going to pan out i believe they're the olmecs oh. i believe they landed in the uh, uh guatemala area and they became the olmecs and then they merged with the tartarian and the other people that were here, and then they migrated north, and I believe that they, the remnants of them, of the, the combination of the Olmecs or the Africans, they were from Africa, came to uh, America, and I believe that they mingled with Tartarians that had already come in across the land bridge and also from the Pacific because of wars, and I believe that they merged and mingled and got their business on and the birds and the bees and they changed into a different, their color changed and they became the brown people today we call black for some reason. And they migrated north and they were in America on the East Coast when the English came over here and plopped their ass down. And they took them as hostage slaves, prisoners of war. And now here's the thing where Dan Calloway comes in. Dan Calloway is showing how these slaves were not slaves, the original slaves. Okay. They were, they were indentured servants and they were contracted to be a slave for a certain period of time for a certain amount of uh, funds or whatever they were paid in some way they once they worked their contract they were freed men not free men freed men they were contractually released from their contract and became what were called freed men but then in order to cover up what they were doing they created the slave trade okay and i believe what they did was they would I believe at that time they would take some of them hostage and they would put them on these ships and they would sail them out and sail them around a while and bring them back in and create this fake slave trade. Okay. And then I believe they also went to Africa and stole some too and got them sold from the Africans. But I believe they created this fake slave trade and maybe possibly some of it was real, but the original slaves I believe Dane Calloway is correct. And they, they, I, I tip my hat to Dane Calloway here, but I believe that the original slaves were actually, lack of better words, prisoners of war, and they have Tartarian blood, for lack of a better word. And um, I believe they are also a, a combination of Tartarian and African. Um, and if you, there are, um, 
I don't have it in front of me, but there, there I have uh, data that I'm collecting where there are actual, there is actually documentation. Okay, here's an example. When one of the uh, Spanish conquist, conquist, con, ah, conquistadors landed over in South America or Guatemala or somewhere around there, they were uh, um, confronted by the locals and they were given golden spearheads okay and they had them sent back to spain and they were tested in the the gold tested that it came from africa mm -hmm. that right there i'm saw that's solid proof yeah that that group from africa got to america Yeah, that's so we I, have that link. Mm -hmm. That's good. that's not. There's more than that, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying that is a hard evidence, scientific evidence. Yeah, no, I love that. I love when they can test, even you know, with copper, and say this came from this mine, and they know uh, yeah. if we can trust their science, and I and I think I do. If it's independent, if it's not put out by you know, like the Smithsonian or something. Um, yeah, but hey, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, on that kind of stuff mm. but i think that's a um a play he also talks about harriet tutman uh have, have you seen the quote about harriet tutman and uh, how she was uh the conductor on the underground rail uh, railroad have you seen that quote yeah yeah where, where she says that she she was a conductor on the underground railroad and she never lost a customer yeah that's pretty her, weird that's train. that's not like the story that we got i mean that was always a confusing story too you're like what's going on with this underground you know like as kids we would dig you know underground uh, you know tunnels and lay <laughs> boards on them and then bury them back you know but what are we talking about here you know are we, we're, and now it comes comes out that she's actually driving a train Oh, I, I think he's right about this. And his research shows that there was two sets of tracks in America at the time. There was the, the regular gauge like you see today, but then there was the, the narrow gauge. And the narrow gauge were the underground railroads. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and you see these, um, if you look back in the old pictures, you'll see these tiny trains that they had at the theme parks and they would run around the theme parks with a, literally a miniature train. I believe they had trains that were that size and they ran them through under the mountains yeah. and underground. And I believe that actually was the Underground Railroad. You know what? Michelle Gibson made a video on that recently on yeah. the tiny trains on the railway parks all around the country. And I grew up in Arizona. We grew up with a little railroad park with a little mini train. Mm -hmm. and, and as kids, we would jump on it. We would, hi we would hobo it. <laughs> and jump in the caboose and it was so magical i mean it was magical then and I, and it never made sense i was like how can there be these little awesome <laughs> real legit tiny little trains i was like why here you know come to find out years later they're everywhere and <laughs> One project I've been working on for over a year now, um, I, when I first started waking up, I wanted to do some research and uh, make a video on, uh, I, I wanted to do a video on a city because everybody's, you know, you got everybody, they'll pick a city and they'll work on it. Somebody will do New York or they'll do uh, Chicago, or, like you would do Salt Lake City. But I was thinking, well, where can I do that nobody's ever done? And I thought, well, why don't I do my hometown, which is Raleigh, North Carolina? And I started thinking about, would that make a good video? And I thought, no, that won't make a good video. There's no mud flood there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Okay, so I, I went in with the premise that I believe in mud flood, but I believe my hometown, home city is not mud flooded. Oh, boy. <laughs> I was wrong. Okay. I, I have not brought I, – I have been working on this video for a long time. It's going to be so big. It's going to be a series nice but i'm not doing one building or the best buildings i'm doing every freaking building in oh, the awesome. city yeah okay yeah. Full... and i'm going into detail on every single one of it. it's gonna be i think gonna be one of the most hardcore mud flood in-depth researches of any city done because i'm gonna not 
I'm not going to do just the the state capitol building and the library. I'm going to do, do everything. The, the colleges, the, the yeah. little tiny buildings, the churches, the the. I love that. I love. I'm that. looking into it, and I had never in my life. I always grew up. I wish we had a theme park. Okay, that I, we could go to and ride roller coasters and everything. I never realized, and I never knew until I did this research, that not only did we have one trolley park, we had two. Yeah. And the there was a carousel that was at one of the trolley parks, and they had actually moved it to another park, and that's the, the carousel I grew up riding. Never knew that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even, in, so, even in Salt Lake, they have a, in Salt Lake, they have a place called Trolley Square, and it's all old old and they have this antiquitec uh, weather tower thing that is awesome and it just makes no sense you know it's it's definitely from I, the old world i was world. reading this uh thing about how they had a fire um where they they almost burned down the entire city but they got it out um and they were pulling the water out of the wells and, and because they said that they had no water in the town other than a few wells. And I thought, wait a minute, that's not right. I know. And I started digging back through my research and I found out that there's a canal that goes under the whole city. And so I went back to do the research on this canal and there's literally no record of it. Wow. It's it's there's nothing. And, and not only do they have one humongous gigantic absolutely five-story humongous bat wing prison but they've got less than a mile away the same size structure and it's called the insane asylum in my city wow i mean that it, it it blew my mind and they're how, still are how, they there are they all still there well that is where the the rub comes in some of it i'd say about 25 percent of what was there is there Mm -hmm. they have destroyed it covered it up burned it down and that's why i never saw it and they have i mean i've got i have done so much research on they even have pavement light i never in my life knew we had pavement light and yeah. i had walked on the very spots that i'm gonna talk about i got I never a comment saw it. i never knew it i got a comment the other day and i'm trying to remember where they were saying it was but but they said i want to say it was ireland but I, I can imagine that there's mud flood stuff in Ireland, but they were saying, here's one place. There's one place in the world that isn't mud flooded. I forget where it was now. Oh, gosh. I've heard one, that. One place yeah. that isn't. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, heard, I heard a guy, this guy, he really, I did a, a, video, a music video on Berlin, and this guy just ravaged me. I live in Berlin. There, Berlin is not a mud flood city. You're crazy, blah, blah, blah. Berlin's not mud flooded, really? Have you looked at Berlin? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Why do you think they blew it up during World War II? Yeah, yeah. I I try not to. I don't focus on uh, outside of America too much because it's uh, I, you know, I don't know it as well as I do America. So yeah, I try to focus more on what I know. Mm -hmm. um, but I yeah. do study the other stuff. Oh, I would love to be in. Uh you know, in, in, in a city too, that I could explore. There's not much out where I'm at. There, there is, there's, there's mud flood evidence out here, even in this town. But, uh, what I have a lot of is, I think more of the melted buildings. And I don't know if you, if you've gotten into the melted buildings, but it's, yeah, I mean, yeah no what is a mountain I, I, what is a mountain and you and you see these mesas and you see like different levels and it looks they look collapsed they look like buildings have collapsed and that's what the mesa is i used to think they were tree stumps and now i'm looking at them and i see levels collapsing and and all that rubble creating this base i i think uh okay mm. The, the mesas i think i think it's a combination of i think some of them could be trees and some of them might be melted okay? i believe in both too yeah um also when it comes to melted buildings the the first thing that drives me nuts about that theory is that when you, the people that usually study that 
they always say this is melted, that is melted, this is melted, uh, that is melted. Throwing and everything that drives me nuts. Yeah, it's throwing because everything. And I'm the, looking at the cities, and they're not melted. Yeah. So they're saying by that, saying everything is melted, it's not true. To me, and to me, that's a way past reset. That's that we were talking about earlier. Yes. Two different resets. You, you and yes. I were saying, okay, you have two different resets. You have. I the think brick that's buildings the further back further back but that that's like that could have been we don't even know i mean we don't even know i that's why i don't even miss with and maybe it and maybe it doesn't matter so far, yeah and maybe it doesn't matter except except for matters. adding it matters for showing that there are reset cycles and that was a very yes. horrific reset cycle but our last oh. ones haven't been that bad yeah huh. this is roscoe oh cute a chihuahua yeah nice he's really in charge oh oh yeah yeah and mine is too well you've been um, sleeping yeah <laughs> yeah in fact i told him i told him i wouldn't do more than two hours he's there <laughs> so yeah people love seeing your dog on your videos yeah yeah they like that a lot i can I, you can tell people are always you know saying hey to him and mm -hmm saying hey to your dog and that's that's really cool it's it's weird how people get into uh see i i i, I use the uh the name bigs because i don't want people to be looking at me as a person okay i am look i'm a human being i've got my flaws i've got a thousand flaws okay i might have a few things right but i've got a thousand more flaws than i do things that are right about myself so i don't want people to focus on me as no, a person. no, it's not. I, it's not. It's not that kind of channels that we that's why have. I use bigs. Mm -hmm. I use bigs because I want people to say bigs. Okay, who cares? And move forward to the data. Yeah, yeah. And so I and I think that's I feel that that's it's a, it's a, it's really it's about what we're talking about. I would never show myself, you know, if it wasn't for I used to get heckled a lot until I did, you know, and I was like, what? They were like, how can we trust? Yeah. We need to know, and I and I could see that to some extent. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, yeah, maybe I would feel the same way. Like I would never really fully a hundred percent trust unless I could see the per and be like, oh yeah, they're totally real. You know, that's why I did it because there there was some guys, uh, some of us, I can't remember who all it was, but they were. I know Martin was in there, and uh, Kalen Wilkinson was in there, um, a few others. I think UAP was in there. I'm not not sure. Anyways, they were in the. Uh, 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 interview chat thing and and they were talking about me and they're like oh yeah he's real i know he's real because i had talked to them you know like we're talking mm -hmm. like we know he's real and i realized and there's these other people like oh okay didn't know that you know and like and i realized that people don't know that i'm real they 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 don't know even though I, i'm talking even though i'm making something it seems like it would be obvious but they don't know and i think that really bother me i don't do it too much i i, I really try to stay away and me too uh, and me too but but, Caleb, yeah, but, it, but it has you see their point i guess and so yeah. it's like every once in a while it's like there's a real per this will be presented by a real person <laughs> yeah you well know. you know caleb gave me the suggestion recently and this is why i started doing this that he goes you should do it like john does it where you come on in the beginning introduce the video and then disappear I loved your that's last it. intro. I loved yeah, it. That's it. That your last intro. So that's was, why I did it. It was good. It was good. Now, also, um, on my next Mudden video, I stole something from you too. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you're going to recognize. I, I I think I outdid you on this one. Nice. You, it'll it'll be in the beginning. And you'll be like, damn. <laughs> nice. I, you'll see it. Yeah. I, I I stole it. I stole your idea and up you one. So nice, you'll see it. and and I'll steal it right back and and keep <laughs> you rolling. <probably> will. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's you know it, every now and then uh, somebody will make a, a comment, funny comment about me, and I'll grab that and and work it and edit it and play with it and put out a little something just as a, a, a like I I don't know if you saw me do that Paul Cook gimmick the other on the last Mudden video that I did where mm -hmm. he got twenty thousand subscribers. Uh, go back and watch the beginning of the last Mudden video, okay? Mm -hmm. And in the first of it, where I'm introducing the video. Oh, yes, I, yes, I, you did. You did. You did give a shout out. That's right. I do remember yeah. now. Yeah. That's just me, you know, saying, hey, you know, props up to you. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we're support. Oh, we, I love you know, that. I love. We're I like love unicorns. How, I, 
I you love know? I love how he was cutting up on the rocks, you know, and yeah, yeah, with the hammer drill. All, all's great. We have a little rapport going back and forth with the comments. We haven't chatted yet, but I'm sure we will down the road. But you know, you and I and Paul and people like us, Campbell and Martin, we're unicorns. There are so few, how many are there of us? Thirty in the world. Yeah. Forty. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, how many and, are there? There's no. not very many. We're we're a very small group, and we we have to support each other because we don't. There ain't nobody that's got our back. You, you know? know what? I was thinking about that today. Actually, I was thinking about that today. I was like, you know what? Here we here we have the the platform. The whole world is invited on the platform. Like we know, we know everybody for the most part that's doing this research. Mm -hmm. There's nobody, there's no like other people doing this research that we don't know about, you know, right. really. I mean, right. unless they're just starting, of course, unless they're just, yeah. just starting, but. But I mean, really doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But, and that's yeah. pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy to think about. We're very, we're, I, I, I hate to say elite, but I mean, and I'm not trying to put us on a pedestal. No, but it's just very, it's a small category. That's all. Okay, I'm six foot three, 270 pounds, and nothing gets in my way. Okay. But that's not great when it comes to being, you know, calm and collected. Like, I love listening to you on a Sunday, drinking coffee and sitting back and getting woken up in the morning on your videos because you're so, you're just mesmerizing with your tone and your, the way you present your material. It's just relaxing. I love it. It's a great start to my day. I love it. Thank you. But I'm not that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm brash. I'm I'm full in your face. I, if I call it like I see it, I don't. I don't. I'm not politically correct. Well, and you, you know? know what's you know what's funny though is I'm not like that in like now, for example. You know, but for some yeah, reason when I'm when it when counts, I, you are <laughs> when when I'm sitting there making a video, it's like it's just me. I'm just sitting here and I'm all relaxed, you know. But if I'm talking to somebody. Oh, it's horrible. You know what I mean? Like, especially if I'm talking to a stranger trying to explain a point, you know, I'll get all pissed and, you know, it doesn't yeah. come out right. But as far as putting it all together, I don't think anybody is, is, is a hundred percent on putting it all together. No, and I don't want to come off. Like I have, all I do is just find this and find, and find all these anomalies. I'm just trying to kind of shake people up and say, Hey, but in, in no way do I have some grand theory besides it doesn't matter. You know how you were asking uh, kind of the, what I'm looking at. And I started telling you about the viaducts and the pavement light and the, the this. Okay. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear what you have found in your research because they like the way you, you do it because they like your research. They know you don't have all the answers. I don't think you have all the answers. Okay. And that's okay. It's like okay. I, the late yeah. Conibus. I saw your video the other day and I thought he's close, <laughs> but I don't think he's got it. Yeah, yeah. And I knew I was going to talk to you. So I was like, I can't wait to tell him about this nice. because, you know, and I, I tried to send you a comment and you did a video on it. I don't remember where it was, but you, 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 I don't remember where you pointed, but you were close, but you weren't on it. And it was the comment. I couldn't transfer the knowledge, but people don't, they know you don't have all the answers. You know how you have the, the, the Christians believe that Christ will come back and there'll be a thousand years reign? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how now the Tartarian community are saying, oh, well, this has already happened now. Now that we know what we know, they're saying, oh, that's already happened. And Christ's already come back and he already had a thousand years reign. That was my theory. That was my theory. Okay. But well, I didn't but I didn't say it like that. I didn't say it like that. I said, what about if this this revelation is just bullshit and it, they're just rehashing this cataclysm that happened in the past? That's the way I presented it. And then parts of the I didn't hear that. I didn't hear your version. But that that's what I'm saying is that people are saying this now. This is becoming a thing. They're yeah. saying Jesus has already come. He's he was here, you know, in the old world. And, and he, he built and he built the building. Yes. Yes. And I think that's bullshit because it's like, what about the brick? Did he build the shitty brick building too next to this one? That's clearly from the past civilization, you know? So I'm having a lot of trouble with this whole see, I have a whole different from from my rel uh religious research, you know, I I have 
I believe that the Jesus is the sun god myth reincarnated is as from antiquity and the original sun god was an or anu from samaria i think and that's so where too. the original myth I, started. I, I, th I mean he it, it, the character has clearly been hijacked from a lot of different sources yes. has and clearly I don't believe been that his name and, was and, jesus yeah and i and i think that's a big and and, and i don't talk about it of course you know because that ruffles no. feathers you know but yeah but that's a biggie it's like no way i told you my beliefs on god you know just a, a one infinite seems very close to what you believe and I'm like, and now you're going to have me take the knee, you know, to a, to this character, you know, like that's supposed to be the son of God. Why would I take, why would I pay homage to any, any person's son? You know what I mean? Like the father is yeah. going to, you're going to have more respect for our father. And, and, and they were, they're like, well, he is the father, you know, he's also the father and he's also the son. Well, then I'm just going to respect the father then if he's both, you know. I talk to God every day. I don't need me anybody to, talk, to be in between me and God. I don't need, and then they threw a ghost in, so, and then they threw a ghost in. Oh, like, yeah, the ghost. A, and then the ghost. Don't forget the ghost. <laughs> I know. Now this guy's tagging along, you know, like there's not enough. Do we need to divide ourselves from God so much? Now we're three times removed, you know absurd yep. but it's but it's a toughie i mean especially in america it's very you know it's very controversial you know but my point is that our community the mud flood community for some reason maybe it's just my view is that there a lot of people are believing in this jesus was already a thousand years reign thing that that, this is becoming a thing i know it's driving know. me nuts i know i know i know another channel i really like and i'm sure you know who i'm talking about is jared boosters oh yeah kid is on point he's gonna be big i'm definitely keep him in the loop because that kid he has got chops he he's got the he's got that spark man mm -hmm. he really does he's got like ten thousand subscribers or something now but He's he's growing like a weed. You, you know what? You know what Jared just discovered, I think, which is kind of like scary, is uh, he made that one video and it blew up to 150,000 views. You know, that rock one. Did you see that one? Rock. Yeah, he put out a video called, like mountains. It was like faces in the mountains, you know, when you see like faces and they turn the mountain sideways and it looks like a titan or it looks like some beast. I don't think I saw that one. So he made that video. Usually he gets, you know, 10 to 20,000 views. Wow. That one got 150. It just blew up. It went viral. And I, and he was, I think he was like, whoa, you know, his subscriber count didn't change much. And yet it's like YouTube let it out of the gate. And I get that once in a while. I'm like, oh, shit, they huh. let this one out of the gate, you know? Like, uh, regular people get to see this. And every once in a while, you know, and you realize how suppressed we oh, really yeah. are. You know, when you, see one, when you see one slip through and then your next videos are getting, you know, a tenth of that, you know? That's what I think happened with my Viaducts video. I think it slipped through and then they clamped me. Yeah, but they don't even I can know. Show you the thing; it goes straight in the air like a rocket, and then goes like that, flat. Just mm -hmm. how in the world does that happen? You, pe all these people are interested, and all of a sudden they're not. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It was overnight. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like over time. It was. Tsh. It's like there's a governor. You know the governor chip on the car. You know it's yeah. like it's, they get they put governors on our channels. You know, but once in a while, one slips out. I, I don't know why. Uh, I quit drinking and smoking and uh, I haven't done any drugs. I haven't done anything like that since 2008. Nice. I, I quit cold turkey, everything. Nice. And so I've nice. been sober, which sucks, <laughs> but I've been sober. I love coffee. <laughs> but no, I, and that's, I haven't done any of that yeah. since 2008. I, I don't, so, I don't drink. I don't drink or do anything else. I just I just smoke weed and cigarettes. And I want to quit the cigarettes. I'm trying. I try every day to quit smoking cigarettes. I'll tell you how I did it. I mm -hmm. decided I wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. And I, I I quit. I had I had cigarettes sitting on my desk that I didn't smoke ever again. But I quit overnight, literally. And the only thing I did differently, and this is I suggest this because this actually worked for me. Mm -hmm. I took hot chocolate packets of where you you open it to powdered hot chocolate mm -hmm. and anytime i got a craving i take a little bit and that chocolate rush mm -hmm. just something 
Something to cut the something. moment. Yeah. And after about a week, week and a half, two weeks of that. I know. Fun. I know. I, I read a book uh, by the master of quitting smoking. His name's Alan Carr. And I know it. I know the psychology. It's like he teaches it so wonderfully. He's like, instead of like being like, just quit smoking, he's like, psychologically he's like you hate smoking you really do you know like when you're smoking you don't like it no. it's only when you're not smoking that it looks good and then you light it up and you're like this is shit and then you're well, the first one of these are the only one you really enjoy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe the ones after a meal and when you drink yeah you enjoy them a little more but other than that it, it sucks. You stink. Sucks. Your clothes you stink. You don't you, like it. Your food I watch, doesn't taste I, right. I watch other people you know this. People, yeah. You know? People light up a cigarette, and what do they do? They do something else. I do it all the time. I light up, and then I forget about it, and half of it burns out. You know, it's like you don't even want it, but you think you want it when you don't have. It's the craziest thing, you know. But I oh, get it. I get it, oh, and really, and, and that's why every night I quit. Every night I'm like, when the pack runs out. When but I would I need, do corporate I events, they wouldn't let us smoke in the shows. And so I'd be like waiting for the break, man. I'd be freaking Jones and for to go outside and smoke a cigarette. And that's and the I'd just be like, yeah, I'd be like can't. running a camera and shaking. Like yeah. I'd have to take my hands off the camera because I'd be Jones in so bad. I'd smoke two packs of Marlboros a day and three if I was drinking like out at a bar. Oh, yeah. Usually another one then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was horrible. And mm -hmm. I drank like a fish. I, I, I could put it down. 270 pounds, I could put it down pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I, I weighed 325 when I woke up. And uh, I dropped a lot of weight, and I've gained some back. And But uh, I'm a big boy. <laughs> you can tell I'm a big boy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't miss a meal. <laughs> I ain't never been – you're kind of a skinny fella. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't no skinny fella. <laughs> yeah, I think I – I've been I've been 150 since high school. I I haven't changed since high school, really. That, that must be nice. <laughs> I've always I've just always been a big boy. I I ever since I was young, I've just been big. I've not been like a fat person, but I've always been big. Just I've always, people all people didn't mess with me because they were like that dude's big, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Which is good because I you know I'm not a I don't like fighting. I don't I don't think that's a good thing and you know i was growing up christian i was taught to turn another cheek and i really took that to heart when i was young and and so i avoided that and uh which is good um I, I just it's violence i mean it's just not something i was really interested in but yeah yeah you know and i don't think luckily, most people are i don't think any creature really is you know it, it, but it, but you know, it, they talk about all these wars we have i think all these wars they talk about we had are bullshit they're bullshit i don't Do think, you really think that these people sat there and shot guns at each other without yeah. ducking yeah. or or ran at a guy with a sword i just don't believe it anymore i don't believe in it either no i don't think it happened no i could be wrong <laughs> have you seen my theory or not my theory but the the um the theory of uh, the location of uh, the ten uh, uh, King Solomon's temple um, that I put out uh, with uh, talking to Martin. Um, I had I need to do a video on it, but there I, it is so kind of a pretty deep uh, topic. But uh, um, have you do you know what I'm talking about at all? No. Uh, um, or like okay. the rock? Is it that rock inside of King Solomon's? Well, that that's uh, that's the dome of the rock. The dome of the rock. Um, that, that you have the you have the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. you, that was King Solomon's Mount. temple. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's what we're told. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is this is the theory, and I believe that this is going to pan out. I, this is something I've been working on, and I th this is, I think that this is. Uh, <laughs> big i mean I, I, that's why i haven't done anything with it because it's so big I, I, it's got to be handled carefully um and this is not my research but there is archaeology being done right now on this mm -hmm. but they believe the the, the new uh, the theory is that the temple mount that we know okay picture in your mind the temple mount okay that is not the temple mount that is Fort Antonia. 
And if you know your history, you'll understand that that uh, the Temple Mount is. Uh, um, sorry, I had computer did something weird. The 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 Temple Mount is for Antonia, and for Antonia is what was known as the Roman Fort. Okay, and if you do the, it, today, they will tell you the Temple Mount has a little corner in the northwest corner, a building. If you look on today, it's still there. There's a big tower thing, and they call that Fort Antonia. But what you have to understand it that is that there were, I, I don't remember how many soldiers, but it was like two thousand soldiers and like two or no five thousand soldiers and two thousand support staff or something like that. It was a huge number of people that were in this Roman fort. Okay, but you look at this building and it's very small. Okay, but if you do the measurements of a standard Roman fort, they measure exactly the size of the Temple Mount today. Okay, okay. yeah, so that's the first thing. What I'm going to tell you is that what we know as the Temple Mount today was Fort Antonia, okay. that is the Roman fort. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to tell you where King Solomon's temple was. A thousand feet below that. Oh, really? And they built yes. Fort Antonio on top of that? No, it was a thousand feet below it. It literally, you go south. Oh, a thousand feet. okay, okay. They have found, they have been looking for this. Yeah. They have found the city of David just south of the Temple Mount. Is it above ground? It's, bear with me. Um, the, the, there is a, a spring called the, the Gihon spring, and it is a, uh, a spring that works on a valve system. And basically what happens is the water fills up and when it gets to a certain level, it pressurizes and, and shoots up. Uh -huh. And back in, in Roman times, this, this Gihon spring would shoot 450 feet in the air. It was that powerful. Yeah. It is the only freshwater source in Jerusalem. Wow. Now, this is very important because in temple history, in Jewish history, in Jewish law, in order to go into the holiest of holies, you had to cleanse your body fully, head to toe. You had to bathe yourself. You had to wash your ass completely. And you had to do that with fresh water. The only fresh water in the time of the temple is the Gihon Spring. The wells that are there are not freshwater springs, number one. Number two, the only freshwater spring would be a thousand feet below the edge of the Temple Mount. So you'd have to go even further. You would literally have to take a bath, walk up a trail, get up onto the Temple Mount, and then walk to the temple to get into the temple. You'd be dirty by then, yeah. okay? So then you read Josephus's writings, and Josephus talks about his memories. He saw this place, and he I, I've got quotes from his books, and he talks about this Gihon Springs. They have found the Gihon Springs. They have found all these things that coordinate that have to do with a, with the city of David in this area. They have found. Um, uh, the, the bathing areas. They're finding all these things. Um, there's more to it. There, there's a lot more to it, but I'm giving you the nuts and bolts. What I'm telling you is that the, the, the Muslims have this temple and they refuse to move, right? And the Jews want that where the Dome of the Rock is because they think that the temple was there. Mm. They don't know. See, what people don't realize is that when the Jews were kicked out in 70 AD, they were sent packing for a thousand years. They didn't come back. Okay. So when the Christians came back, okay, they see the Dome of the Rock, okay, the, 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 uh, um, the, 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 the Church of Holy Sepulchre, the, 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 the Muslims had put their church there, right? They say, well, that has to be where it is. You got this huge mount, Fort Antonia, and it's got this huge church on top of it. And, oh, well, the Muslims had to have put their church where the temple was. And the temple, if you know your history, here's, here's a key. 
you know that you know, have you heard of the western wall mm-hmm. okay do you know what they say the western wall is uh to keep giants out i don't know <laughs> no they say the jews believe it's the western wall of the temple okay okay but wait if you read the history in the bible it says that the 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 king solomon's temple was torn down to the foundations and all not one stone was left unturned wait a minute if not one stone was left unturned why is there a wall there okay well when they're undigging the city of david they're digging through all this rubble from buildings okay Mm-hmm. They're digging through the rubble from the Temple Mount to get to, down to where the city of David is. Okay, they've also found the Mount Mount of Zion that they tore it down too. They they leveled it down. They're finding all this stuff right now, and then you've got the Jews, and they have every piece to rebuild the the third temple already staged really? right outside of Jerusalem, ready to build the temple at a moment's. They can literally have that thing built in three weeks. So they have recovered all of the pieces that the Bible say were smashed down? All that they have put them back together. They really? have, have collected them, rebuilt them. Unbelievable. The only thing they don't have supposedly is the Ark of the Covenant uh-huh. and the uh the menorah. But they my okay, here's my point. The third world war is supposed to be fought, and the, the Bible says that basically. The, the this is where the the, the end times is going to begin that, that that this temple that they're fighting over this spot has to the be Jews rebuilt want it and the muslims want it, and, and they're ready to rebuild it just like the prophecy says that's it that's interesting that they're ready to rebuild it on a moment's notice right but see, Whoa. what I'm telling you is that they don't have to put it where it. They could where put they it right. It they is. could put it down a hundred hundred yards away, like you're saying, where it's supposed to be. Right, they, just they are in know. the they are in the wrong place, and, and they're going to figure it out. It sounds like from what you're telling me, they're actually figuring well, it out. You've got one set of a group <laughs> of archaeologists and Jews that are working on this, and they are like fighting tooth and nail to get this word out. But all oh, they're you know the the hardcore uh, Jews, all oh, they're pissed. They are like, no, 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 no. It's no, not no, here, you're, even you're though. No, no, Even no, no, though no. they're they're discovering the original site, that's really interesting. That is fascinating. Fascinating. Maybe we fascinating. should do a chat. Maybe our next chat could be on that. We could we could focus on that. That would be. If interesting. you go yeah. to uh, uh, my video, um, it's on my channel under playlist. Uh, you can see my chat with Martin, and I actually put in some diagrams and some quotes from Josephus in the part where I talk about the temple. Now, I, I tell him what I just told you, but I added those things. And I can send you some data on this stuff too, but th- there is, this thing is real, man. It's so cool. This is real hardcore archaeological evidence that's coming out. So do you think that, do you think that that wall is, do you believe that it's, it's for Antonia? It's, yeah. not, it's for Antonia. It's okay. not anything to do with Jews. Okay. It is a Roman, for, matter of fact, they they even it, uh, they're the if you, the um if you the, look the at that well, talk about a, the if, the histories talk about a ramp that connected for Antonia to the temple right that that was um basically a viaduct that went from the the, the where the the Roman soldiers could come down the viaduct and get into the city of David right mm-hmm. and they have found now where that viaduct was on the left hand side the the south the southwest corner they have found where that connected and, and was destroyed they found, this is all coming to light yeah yeah that's amazing it, it's all it's, I, it's I'm exciting not, to me because it, it changes so much history there i remember seeing a, a show on that wall and they went underground underneath and under that wall that yeah and you have blocks the size of ball back you know the ball backs yeah. The the trilatons or whatever they call them. Yes. Same thing. Yes. Same thing. And even stranger is there were there were pieces of wood infused into those blocks, which lent to the idea that they were actually a concrete. If you have wood, and this was supposed to be biblical Could wood, be. biblical wood underneath the wall underground, fused into these blocks. 
that leads to another theory that 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 I'm a um I don't if I read Zachariah Ascension. Me too. And his work, I a lot of people put him down, but I think he was he may not have been perfect, but he, I think he, he was on to a lot of things. He was on to he was on to a lot of things, except you know where I think we get lost with it, and maybe this is his interpretation was was space. That's where and I fell away from Zechariah once once I got in the flat earth, but then I was like, wait a minute, there's yes. still something there. There's still a good story here. And this I had is the an old same story. problem, but yep. I've I've justified it or figured it out in my mind how that works. Yeah. Interdimensionality. You, you know what I was thinking the other day? Literally two days ago, I was thinking about this. It's funny that we're talking about it because I have <laughs> I have no one to talk to this sh this stuff about. Me neither. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> I was like, I'm crazy. <laughs> you know how you know how they say that they entered through the hammered bracelet, which we're told is the asteroid belt, the hammered bracelet. Right. I believe that was a planet. But well, what if, what if the hammered the history, yeah. What if the hammered bracelet is actually the Antarctic ice ring? around us and they came in through the hammered bracelet because that's like a ring around us i mean we know that there's this you know and what if there's openings in it and they call it the hammered bracelet and so and and lands beyond and he misinterpreted it yes and he says planets when you know yeah there's something out there you know we don't have to think space if if you but have who's no to say that interdimensionally they didn't come in through in, interdimensionally is another way to Martin Martin would kind of fall into line with that you know Martin is believing that these Phoenicians are interdimensional and travel through water and can shape shift and I don't discredit it I don't know I don't know reptilians I mean yeah. you know oh oh but anyways where I was going with that is if you if you remember your Zechariah Ascension uh, in his books he talked about how Lebanon Baalbek was the landing pad, mm -hmm. but if you remember the history is even clear, he said the Temple Mount was the control tower. Okay, I didn't remember that. Think about that. Yeah, yeah. What if that mount? Where well, you were just talking about those big blocks underneath the Temple Mount? What if that mount had a humongous structure on like it? a babylon like a tower of babel on top of it kind of a kind of like a control Some sort tower of tower that was so they Heck. could get line of sight and they also he also says in there that the pyramids were one of the markers and mount moriah i believe was another marker as they were coming in so they could line up their incoming flight path yeah but yeah. and 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 you know what you know what? I mean, how we talk about even ancient mining, that that makes sense. Even when I even in my last video, when I'm up in the Uinta Mountains, you know, you can see it looks like mining excavators, you know, have just been grinding on yes. the tops of these peaks. And right when I see that shit, I think right away, I think back to Sitchin. I'm like, these Anunnaki coming here and mining the shit out of the tops of the mountains. And we're you just like ants. the the incension was talking about how they were mining the gold in Africa. And did you know that they are finding millions of ancient ancient gold tunnels? Mines? I would love to talk about that. I would love to. That's something that I've wanted to talk about for years. I mean, <laughs> yes, I mean they, they that's exactly they find, what he said. <laughs> they find tunnels that go in miles, and then they find another intersecting tunnel perfectly with squared. Yeah. yeah. And that, that oh, brings me back to situation. Underground right? everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. The, it, I even found underground tunnels in, in Raleigh, in the city. I mean, underground is so in America. And it's like, what in the world is going on here, man? It's like people ask me, where did people come from when they came into the cities? Where Before they found the cities, before they came to the cities, where did they come from? I said, I think they came from underground. Yeah, I don't know, but why are we finding these cities all over the world that are underground cities? It makes sense. It makes sense. Some some would have ended up under there after the mud flood. Just some would have planned it. Some would have just planned it and had. Maybe it was. I have wondered if they planned to do a takeover of the giants because I was okay. I think about Zachary Ascension how they say that the the people started rising up. 
and that's when they decided to give them a little more freedom and then they were arguing about that but basically i was wondering what if the giants were kind of in charge because you know they're giants and we're the little people and they've got us kind of doing the the shit work and we're kind of getting tired of it we want to be a little higher on the totem pole so we come up with this plan to burr underground create these cities and then use the technology to like do attack them somehow and do some kind of liquefaction event where it rolls mud into the cities all around the world but my point is that maybe we planned as the little people to take over the giants in some way. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I'm spitballing. And, and, yeah. No, I, I think yeah. there is there, there is there is that aspect to it. And then I also uh, think the and, giants and left the cities before this happened. Yeah. I don't think they were in the cities when, when they were flooded. Mm -hmm. Because I think we would have found them. True. And we don't. True. We find the Indian burial mounds, which I think are the giant. I think those are giant burials. I don't think they're burials. I think they're buildings. I think they're just buried buildings, like I don't, like I, pyramid. I think they've been found with giants in them. Oh yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. I think, but, but I don't think it's also a burial. golf courses or some. I, I know, but I don't oh. think it's a tomb. I don't think it's a burial. I think it's a building, and they I are telling us. Thought they just pile bodies up in them. And that's why they. I think that's like a guy boring. dies in the desert. All you got is rocks to bury him. It's kind. Of, it's kind of like. Have you seen uh, Garfield's tomb? President Garfield's tomb. Yes, 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 I have. Yeah. His tomb is like it's a building. First of all, it's not even a fucking tomb. It's a building. And where's and, that and, one, the mausoleum in Ohio, uh, Dayton, Ohio, or Cincinnati that's like absolutely incredible? Uh. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Some famous guy supposedly built, yeah. but it's fuck that. It, yeah, and that it, it has nothing to do with death. These things have nothing to do with death. <laughs> that thing is amazing. And, and I think that's what. Same with the tombs. Same with the damn pyramid. What do they tell us about the pyramid? It's a fucking tomb. It's a no, fucking tomb. No, 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 no way, no way. People win it, but when when He's, you're, pyramid, you can't complete it before he dies. You, that's the bottom line. You, if you can't finish it before, even Garfield's tomb, even President Garfield's tomb, he dies. And then they're like, oh, and they built this tomb. It would take you 
10 years in that time to build this like what are you going to let his body rot while, while you're building Ridiculous. this fucking tomb i know people talk about the the those pyramids and how they were built maybe they were built this way maybe they were oh. built that way i said look y'all were talking about these 2.5 ton blocks i don't give a damn about a 2.5 ton block i want to know how in the hell did they put an 80 ton block in the center yeah yeah Oh, answer you know, me that. You know, you know we'll what you, you know what my thoughts are, is all the grandest buildings that we see, the pyramid, uh, the courthouses, the the world's fair buildings, like all of these towers, everything, like they all go underground. Even monuments, even the so, uh, the monument in Indiana, you can go underground. They give tours. I think that every single grand yeah. and glorious thing was actually just a beacon to go under, whether it was for travel or the underground cities. And and these things, and they got mud flooded, but they still have access. All of these grand, all the courthouses, yeah. all the Capitol buildings, these are all like uh, hubs. They're hubs. And they're hubs connecting via underground even the pyramids. I mean, it's like a, you go down a ramp and then another ramp and, and they tell us it just ends. No, everything keeps going and connects. Maybe. Did you see uh, my, I, I, know, I hate to keep asking this, but I don't know what you, I don't, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I didn't know until recently that you'd even heard of me. Mm. So I didn't know that, I don't know when you've heard of me, but I didn't know at all that you'd heard of me until recently, Caleb. Oh, yeah. Me. Like, I think like two so, years ago, I made a, a video on your pavement lighting and I gave I gave a shout out to your channel. I never knew that. Okay. Okay. I never. I, I, and I don't even know what video that is of mine. I don't even I, know my old video. I didn't I know even, that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would, I'll have to go look for that. But did you see the video? I'm, I'm really proud of this one because it's the per first it's not i didn't label it as such but it is actually my first raleigh video is my one on the the misdirection of confederate monuments no okay i think you would really enjoy that video because i talk about one structure for an hour Mm -hmm. And basically, my point is, it's an obelisk that's in downtown Raleigh, and they removed it. Oh, yeah. And, and I go through this whole spiel about the history of it, and they talking about how they removed it, and how they, why they removed it, and the history of this and history of that. And I go through, and I, they talk about all these things, right? And then I, I get to the point, I say, I don't care about any of that crap. I don't care about the who. I don't care about when, why, where. I want you to tell me how they put that obelisk up. Because it. it is a 75-foot obelisk. Yeah. And when they went to remove it, it they had to bring in not one, not two, but three separate consecutively bigger cranes in order to lift it. And even then, they had to drill post into it in order to get the 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 um cable around it in order to lift it in the air yeah and get it down and they barely got it down yeah and so it's a whole video on one thing and i think and, it's well done even though make a good, and that's it that's my favorite way to present this history just most like people that. have the attention span of a freaking gnat so yeah. they won't watch it but mm. No, you that, can't that's get anywhere unless you that's do it. That. It's like I don't care. I'm the same way. I don't care about. I mean, I'll go through the story, but I really don't care about it. It, it comes down to how are you going to do this in that time period when we struggle to tear it down in this time period, right? Oh, I, 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 I think I did. I, I really want it. Um, I, I think, I, I think you've seen the pavement light videos, and you've seen the. Okay, make sure you watch the pavement light videos. Um, the shedding new light they're the, they're my claim to fame mm -hmm. and and the the viaduct video and the the confederate monument video i think those videos are the ones that you'll really enjoy the most or get the most out of and i think uh i think <laughs> so. he, make, he makes our life you know it gets shitty before it can get good you know it's like everything has to burn it's like the phoenix rising and it does and i'm i see it in my life I, it's like constantly burning 
And I have to remember that like shit has to burn away to get better. And and oftentimes that's it's not I pleasant. think society has to collapse in order to heal. Of course. And it is, it is, it is. And the more it collapses and the more the more people wake up and say, What matters? What matters? Corona has actually been great for the people. Even in this oh man, people are freaking out, man. Well, in a place like this, in a place like this, mm. all of a sudden I see people like going out. I mean, in a good way. It, the, yeah, you, you got the people that are freaking out because they're stupid, but the, in the sheep. But then you got the people that are on the fence and they're freaking out because it's like, whoa, wait a minute now, this ain't right, and they know it. Yeah, and it, and it's it. you know I think it's ripe. It's ripe now. The the worse it gets, the the more opportunity there is for a change. I really do think so. And even the thing I was sharing with you, you know, like God, you know, and I. When I first started making videos, I was afraid. I was afraid oh, to yeah. talk about the shit I talk about. I was like, I was like, am I willing to die? And I was That's like, yeah, I didn't I'm, talk I'm, originally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, I yeah, I'm, I'm willing uh, to die. And I'm thinking. Most of my new original videos, you'll notice I do no talking. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. scared. Oh, I, yeah. I, it was like six months before I did anything talking. I know. And then we get over it and we're like, you know what? It wasn't that scary. It wasn't that bad. You know, like we really think we're, you know, we're going to get taken out or something. Well, and I'm feeling that I again. Thought. I'm feeling that again. Yeah. Uh, another uh, theory um, um, that I'm working on. Uh, have I don't know if you saw this. I talked about it with Campbell and Martin about uh, Fort Raleigh which is a star fort in uh, North Carolina. Oh, no. Did, did you catch any of that? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, there is a... Uh, okay, if you go back into the history of, of, of America, um, the English sent over the first colony. Um, the, the fir they, 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 they started a colony in Roanoke... Uh, not Roanoke, in, in uh, Roanoke, North Carolina. Okay. And it was called the Lost Colony. You've probably heard of that. Okay, it's standard history, U.S. History 101. Okay, mm -hmm. matter of fact, if you don't, if you've not heard that story, I'm really surprised because it's it's a official history. They really want you to believe this one. Really important. For but them the basic play. gist is that they came over. The English started a colony, and there was a gentleman named John White who you might have heard of before. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was the guy that hooked up with, uh, I believe, hooked up with Pocahontas, and he was a famous cartographer. He he made the first early maps of America, um, of the of the East Coast. Anyways, he's a famous English cartographer um, sent by the English Crown over here to start an English colony in America, and they started in a place called supposedly in a place called Roanoke, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, which is out story. on the Outer Banks area of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And so they ran they were running out of supplies. So they took the ship back to England, but they left a group of people here. When he came back, they were gone. And they've never been seen again. Okay. And the story goes is, is that when they were here, they built a fort called Fort Raleigh. And it was in the shape of a star fort. Wow. And if you go there today, there's a place called uh, the the um, the Lost Colony uh, Historical Preservation Site or some shit like that. And they have a, a outdoor play called the Lost Colony. And uh, Andy Griffin starred in it originally. He did that oh, before man. he did uh, Mayberry, uh, whatever that was. Uh, okay, this yep. is where he got his start. Mm -hmm. And there is a, the Fort Raleigh is still there, still there today, okay? But he, let me, uh, I'm going to show you this because this you're, this will trip you out. Um, like their colony, like what you're saying is their colony should somewhat resemble their fort and it doesn't. If they had these same building abilities, they're probably going to have a shitty colony and this beautiful star fort. No, no, no? you're all... Oh, the oh, other way backwards out. it's backwards <clears throat> um okay i got to find okay i got it here okay i got to find a picture of the original or what 
Hold on, it's it's coming up. I got well. Dang it! But you don't believe Hold the on. you don't really believe the story though. Oh no no no! I oh you're gonna you're gonna trip out when I show you this. Um, that's what I love to do. Is like here you've just told a story and it sounds very innocent and plausible. And now we're going to look at the picture and it's just going to be mind blowing and like, like not yeah, even fit I, with the story. I, I've, uh, I hear it is. I've, I've, I've got, I've got so much data here. It's, it, I've got six uh, gigabyte or excuse me, six terabytes of data. Oh, wow. Um, okay. It's, it's not, it's not in that. Dang it. Uh, shoot. Hold on, I've got to find this. I, I've I've I found most of what I need, but I've got to show you this one other thing. Um, oh, I think I got it here. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, heck yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. This is worth it. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen. Tell me when you see that. Okay, yep, see it. That is Fort Raleigh today. Wow, are you serious? What is it, made of mud? I mean, has, it, has, has, has the brick turned into dirt? No, oh, it's going, you're going to love this. Is it concrete? It's a mock-up. They just made it? They just they, traced it? They traced it? I was taught that was Fort Raleigh my whole life. I was taught that is Fort Raleigh. That is not Fort Raleigh. When I did the research into this, I found out that this is a mock-up. Number one, it's a mock-up, okay? Mm -hmm. It is a, a, a tourist attraction. Okay. Number two, they don't know where the Star Fort was. Oh. Number three, they do not know where the Lost Colony was located. And you do? Oh, I... I Okay, I'm going to answer that by saying I don't know. I can't say that I know where they were located, but I am going to show you. So this is also another picture of it today. Mm -hmm. This is a, a diagram of it, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you're, you're going to trip out when I show you this. I got to show you this in the right order, though. Okay. Recently, in a uh, English museum, they found a map. And this map was drawn. It was a a, a, a one-of-a-kind hand-drawn map by John White himself. Okay. This is official record. This is a map drawn by, by John drawn by John White. Okay. And this map shows a map of the area that he drew that he made before he left America to come back to go back to, to yeah. come back to England. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when they found this map, there was something very interesting about it, okay? This is the map, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you see anything weird in that picture? The artificial yeah. coastline. Okay, the, 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 the Roanoke, Roanoke is right here. Where they say the Lost Colony is right here, okay? You see that where my cursor is? Yeah. A little pinkish area right here. Uh -huh. They say that this is where the Lost Colony is today, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But it looks like the Star Fort's out here, out way out here. Okay, do you see anything weird now? I see it. I see a star out here. The whole damn land, land is a star, it looks like. Okay, okay. Ignore that. Okay. That's the outer banks. Okay, that's a that's a different story. But look look for any any anomalies. There's two anomalies on this map. Mm -hmm. Um you see anything weird that's out of place. I'll get it even even closer. I don't know that. I don't know the area. Anything weird? I don't know the area that well. I mean, no, 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 no. Forget that. Do you see anything weird about that picture? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna scroll out and I'm gonna zoom into another area. Do you see anything weird about that, that picture? Not off. The I'm messing top. with your head here. Okay, mm -hmm. you done? You give? Yeah, yeah. Okay, when they found this map. Okay, this is an original map. This is not a photocopy. This is a this is an image of an original map. Mm -hmm. They noticed that there was these pieces of paper glued to the to the map right, right oh, here. Yes, and they, right they, here. 
they took the star fort out okay then That's they decided right. what they would do is they decided what they would do is they would go okay you see that patches okay yeah. there's another one up here even mm -hmm. okay well, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on this one right here, okay? Notice that this is where they say the Lost Colony is. Also, remember that they do not know the actual location of the Lost Colony. Mm -hmm. they, it is not confirmed that it was here. They think it was here. They thought it was here. But I'm going to show you. This is You're going to drop trowel when I show you this. They x-rayed the son of a bitch. Oh, LiDAR? Okay, this uh -huh. is the bottom patch. Whoa. Okay. Oh, who did this? Okay, that's not too cool. That is the other patch. Whoa, good one. Who did this? Who x-rayed it? The, the British Museum. Good for them. This is awesome. That is a star fort. That today is a golf course. There is absolutely nothing there, and they say that nothing was ever there before the golf course. Whoa. There is a star. I don't care who... You talk to that is a star for you know what you know what this this would have been good to, they, we got to share this but this is gold i would, I would yeah this is gold i th and i think we had a lot we had a lot of good conversations that i think would be worthy to to share you know i know i enjoyed our our talk today god we've been talking for four hours well I, let's I, give it a rest then let's give it a rest i gotta get out to my dog but um that was awesome. That was awesome. I knew it would. I knew. I've heard you, you know, chatting with other people, and I'm like, God, we'll have a good time talking. We'll have so much to talk about. And I sure. appreciate it. I, I, I figured we were kindred spirits as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I didn't uh, – I kind of figured the universe, if, if we needed to talk, it would put us together, so I never tried to get with you. I figured it would happen on its own, and it did. Yep, yep. Um, so I, to I totally did. believe that. I do. I, I call people – We'll probably have it too, you know, like we don't even need to like call. You'll just think and we'll be like, oh, you know, okay. sweet. Well, it was awesome, brother. Very awesome. Very, yeah. uh, I'll stop this show. Do you, I, I, I wasn't even thinking about even, you know, putting this out or anything. Is this, is that, I mean, I, don't, I hadn't even, Caleb, uh, not Caleb. I uh, had no, I had no I plan either. I had no plan. I was like, I don't know if it's going on yours or mine, if it's going on anyone's. But, I didn't even care about that. I was just, no, you know, I just wanted to, to just, I just wanted together, to, you know, me too, me too. <laughs> and it's awesome. Okay. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Yeah. That, thank you. That, it was fun. That did a lot for my soul. I me mean, too. Me too. I, I really did. Yeah. I have, I lost everyone I care about in 2008 when I woke up, they all flipped out and just thought I went off the rails. Which oh, I understand. That's them, what, I that's, did. Yeah. Yeah. And I lost every friend I have, and I have not really, I have just in the last year started gaining new friends in this community. Me too. But we're other all, than that, all... I really don't have friends because yeah. nobody, nobody, I start talking, people go. I know. <laughs> or, or, or the alternative is to talk about watered down, just blah. The weather and, and we don't want that either you know so yeah it, it's very isolating you know having open eyes you know i get it, it is anytime you need to chat need to get just need to unload or just need somebody to listen or talk i'm i'm up for it man because you're you're definitely my kind of people me as well so, me as well i appreciate it, awesome. it. yeah i really do <laughs> all right so anyways i'll let you go i know you gotta go <laughs> yeah we'll talk soon i'll get going okay all right see ya
again! Say woof again! I've got one that can see. Welcome to the underground. This is my kung fu, and it is strong. See you later!